Hey guys, before the video starts, I hope you guys remember that image I put of um, my logo, I guess my YouTube logo with the 3D glasses on it. Um, that's kind of the next evolution of the channel that I've been trying to do. And um, as you guys can see, this is a reaction video. And um, this video, ironically, was not the first video that I reacted to. I actually reacted to one of my favorite YouTubers, Super Eyepatch Wolf's latest video called The Unreality of Wrestling, where he breaks down Roman Reigns' career from his time with The Shield to who he is now as the Tribal Chief. And before anything else gets said, I will say this. I acknowledge you, my Tribal Chief. Roman Reigns right now, at least the evolution, his evolution from where he was to his to where he is now has been fascinating. And having Super Eye Patch Wolf break that down was amazing because I am a super casual when it comes to pro wrestling. But every now and then something brings me back. And the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns brought me back the same way The Shield brought me back. The same way CM Punk brought me back, you know? So I... You know, I mean, like I said, the, it turned out the, his video thing is a little bit, I think, an hour and a half long. And I ended up going like three hours because I kept pausing and talking and all this stuff about some things that I just don't like about how Roman Reigns was treated and, and things like that going up uh, as he as he continued with his career. But that video was claimed all the way to hell by WWE. Like I have tried multiple things. So maybe if i can find another way to react to it i'll find another way but right now that's three hours of work gone because at this point after doing all the copyright stuff at one point youtube just like ww wants this like basically about half the video gone so maybe i could take some steps i'm trying to look into it but maybe i could just react to it live but either way if you like pro wrestling you should go watch that video it is fantastic if you like just great long kind of like breakdowns or examinations, even if you don't like pro wrestling, you should go watch that video. Basically, anybody and their mother should be subscribing to Super Eye Patch Wolf because the man makes amazing content. And he's one of the main like inspirations that I have when I make my videos. And um, he's just perfect, man. He's, he's, he's like, he's like, I'm, when I say perfect, I mean the way he makes his videos is perfect. I don't know the man, obviously, personally, but the man's doing great work. Plus, there's a Simon Miller shout out in the video. So it's, it's just something you should see. And um, take it away, future me, because the explanation's over. Thank you, past me. Um, as you guys know, we're doing a reaction video to the Dynasty Warriors Iceberg, a video that I found after I finished the Dynasty Warriors movie review. And um, I've just been waiting because I, I wanted to do something with this video. I just didn't know what. And as you guys can see, I've been leveling up some of my abilities because I told you guys I wanted to branch out for more than just anime. So we're going to do some reactions uh, to this video. Um, to give you guys a little bit of backstory on Wildcat, whether I've actually watched a few of his videos before just by accident, if I hop over to his channel. So he looks like he does a bunch of, uh, I guess he's a video game reviewer. And um, I have seen his War Warriors Orochi. I've seen his Warriors Orochi where he plays every single game in the series and he kind of, and then he ranks them. I've seen part of his Samurai Warriors uh, video and I've seen his Dynasty Warriors video kind of showing um, I guess the best part about it is showing how much these three series by themselves has changed I wonder what he's gonna keep doing this for other things I think he has something here with I played every game of a series and then ranked them I know if I remember correctly he doesn't really spend a lot of time with each video so to speak like he's not like completing the game but he's playing a significant amount so that he can get a feel for the game and then he ranks them on a tier list so um i have just i guess you know if you want to look at my thing if i think one thing warriors fans know at this point that i think samurai warriors is better than dynasty wars at least the way it's portrayed because um it's crazy i don't know how the you know obviously i don't know how the teams work but it's like dynasty Warriors goes first and it's like the 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 the, the test and then Samurai Warriors makes it better even though with Samurai Warriors 5 the series essentially did a reboot and I think there is some there were there is some good stuff there but 
there are also some things that were just kind of unforgivable in my opinion and some things it's like koei has the formula but they get lazy sometimes if it, it, if you get what i mean summer warriors 5 has the ability to be good i think they hit something really out the park with the spirit of sanada uh, i guess spinoff that they did when during the samurai wars 4 era and I, they were trying to do the same thing with samurai wars 5 except this time they focused on the oda rise to power until honoji um so there's something there but if samurai warrior 6 ever gets announced you know we'll, we'll see what they do all right so this video is gonna be a long one i'm i'm gonna try my best to um edit out the ads that are probably gonna come up in the video but i haven't seen this video yet so let's see what's going on i also finally get to kind of showcase a little bit more of my dynasty warriors um knowledge as you guys know i've been a fan for god almost 20 years and um there is um i'm obviously i'm excited to learn some new things because i saw just from the image alone i was like yo some of the stuff i haven't seen and uh to for full disclosure there's also another video by a certain random gaming channel where he adds a little bit more to the dynasty wars iceberg video so i watched it I, ironically i watched this before i watched um the iceberg video just to kind of see kind of the thing so i guess you could say i did watch a little bit of the iceberg video just by association to kind of see what's going on but um there's some stuff added there like it is true that in the in the 2008 olympics which i never knew they actually played a dynasty warriors 6 song which is freaking clutch which is uh when michael phelps and uh the american team won gold um in like their swimming relay which is crazy that they were just playing that so that's awesome shout out to dynasty warriors for getting that far but let's enough stalling let's start right on in Welcome to the Dynasty Warriors Iceberg. Oh yeah, Lupu drinking video, a Pepsi. We're going to take a deep dive into some of the obscure aspects of our favorite ancient China hack and slash video game. This iceberg we'll be looking at today was. I've been meaning to myself, wonder. Hold I on, let me pause. Let me pause for a second. I've been meaning to wonder. Um, I don't really understand iceberg videos. I guess the fact that they're telling us like some of the most ex obscure things about a certain franchise or whatever, and they're all over the internet. But I guess I could say this with, like. 87% certainty that I'll probably never make an iceberg video because I just don't understand it. And um also seem like there's a lot of work going into that and with the way my life is right now and I'm trying to diversify so I can keep um having content come out while I'm still reading the freaking My Hero Academia manga. That that's such a dry read. But I have a I I, I like the idea of iceberg videos. So I was I was actually surprised. I'm like, is there enough like dynasty wars content to even make an iceberg video on dynasty warriors so i was very surprised so that's why let's hop on in wen yang is a reincarnation of xiao yun a okay. ton of help from the warriors community Wang Gang Ning looking for the kid with the original the idea for all credits check the description and stick around until the end of the video okay a big thanks to all of you who helped out either on the r slash dynasty warriors subreddit or discord server i'm a member of the r of the dynasty warriors subreddit i didn't see this with that out of the way let's dive into the dynasty warriors iceberg all right let's see what you got for me mr wildcat weather tier one <clears throat> Musou. Musou is an important concept in Dynasty Warriors. Mm -hmm. It roughly translates to unmatched and is the series' namesake in Japan. Mm. Just like we call Warriors games, well, Warriors games in the West, these games are called Musou games in Japan. Musou this is, is the old the model of Gong Ning. Ultimate attacks of uh, when, when his special attack, as you guys can see, was like, he's like a lawnmower. It was Romance awesome. It was awesome. Like um, anybody who's ever played Dynasty Wars Four, where you go rescue Liu Shan and uh, in Chang Ban or whatever. Sometimes it, he popped up in other stages. Basically, you'd be able you when you rescue Liu Shan, you'd get unlimited Muso for sixty seconds, right? And if you have Gong Ning, and you don't want to hop on a horse, just pop that thing, hit your special, and you're just running across the stage as maybe the most dangerous entity on the battlefield i've one shot lubu before doing that when i have mind you it was a maxed out gong ning but i've done that before so i was like yo this is wild you know it's kind of crazy plus he has the, the three kingdoms Wuzhang plains 
Romance uh, of the Three Kingdoms is a 14th century historical fiction novel about the Three Kingdoms period of ancient China, which is the setting for Dynasty Warriors. So I have a, I had just, I bought the novel on Amazon the other, Chinese I, literature I believe about a month ago. Most influential novels of all so time. I'm ex- actually in Dynasty the middle of reading Warriors it right now. Dynasty Warriors more from the novel than it does from actual historical events of the time period. Yeah. Without ROTK, Ooh. as it's called. Pause. Pause. Let me pause for a second. Okay. Um, kind of give you a little bit of background because I, I don't know if he's going to mention this or not. This this map right here is the Dynasty Warriors 3 non-mon stage. Um, one thing I loved about Dynasty War 7, because this is the game that he's showcasing right here. Dynasty War 7, um, it's essentially since it was a reboot of the series after the disaster of Dynasty Warriors 6. Which I, I mean, I'd be shocked if the Iceberg video doesn't mention it. Um, Dynasty War 7 brought back a lot of old classic stages for us to play, right? And Dynasty Warriors, at least the non mon stage, Dynasty Warriors 3, at least for me, it always felt like it was a lot tougher than it should be. But, and it was always like, um, whenever you're playing as Shu or Wu characters, you would be playing, this would be like the last, um, what call it? The second to last stage you'd play before the final game in the series, which before the final stage in the series, where you'd ultimately end up facing Wei if you're either Wu or uh, Shu. So the craziest part was that Dynasty Wars Three showcased how little like Shu and Wu actually faced off against each other. Because you'd be doing your thing, and then you'd all of a sudden you play Yiling, Wu would be wiped out, and then all of a sudden you'd be like, "All right, we're back to fighting Wei." But I'm obviously. Uh, Wu and Shu, you, I don't know about historically, but you see in the novel, they don't fight a lot. Like, the series has to make a lot of, like, battles where they fight each other, whether it's in quotations or not. So, um, I think I really enjoy this stage. And this stage, at least when and, and, and whenever you first encounter it, or if, you're, if your character's not level enough, this stage can kick your ass because over here... You have Wutugu's armor troops coming up right here. Then I think you have Ahui Han and his troops right here. Then um, you have one of the kings, either King Dose or King Mulu. Like, you, this is the first time you ever get to see elephants. I don't know if they were in Dynasty Wars 2. I haven't, I haven't gotten that far yet in Dynasty Wars 2. But you get to see elephants. And then if you take one and you're high enough rank, you can pop through right here with your forces and, like, double and, like, attack uh, through here which was like a like a shortcut your forces could use if you were quick enough. And then over here is the the the, the trademark um poison swamps where your character would run through and your your yeah, the longer you stay there obviously you're getting poison so your life would go down, but the non-mon forces they're immune to it. So I like the map. Dynasty Wars 4 took it to the limit because Dynasty Wars 4 then on my map has everything like I said before Wutugu's armor troops, the elephants, the poison swamps, but they added features to it that like the longer the battle would go on, your your forces would lose morale because you're fighting an unfamiliar terrain. It's like the it's like the game forced you to be like you need to move quickly because along obviously like you said the longer you fight, the more your forces are at a disadvantage and w- I don't know if anybody can answer this. Why did it take so long when you get to the point where you where you do that fire attack on Wutugu's armor troops? Why did it take so long? I wonder if anybody could ever answer that. So, that's just one of those things. Let me go back. I'm, let me stop talking. There would likely be no Dynasty Warriors. Do not pursue Lu Bu. Oh. That's what you Do get in every game. Lubu Maybe that's like the number one lesson you should the learn. Most iconic line in Warriors history. The line is said in some form in almost every Dynasty Warriors game at the Battle of Hu Lao Gate. The player is typically advised to stay away from Lu Bu as the already crazy strong character usually has deadly buffs applied to him at this battle. It's usually good advice as in some games, Lu Bu can take you out in just a couple hits if you decide to fight him head on. Alright, so now, the first time you hear the line, don't pursue Lu Bu, was in Dynasty Warriors 3, said by Yuan Shao. And ironically for me, it's, it's like one of his, like his biggest like calling cards. I think Dynasty Warriors 7, Cao Cao takes, it from, takes that line from him. I'm like, hey yo, Yuan Shao's not in the story a lot. Don't take that line from him. But, for real, like... Most times, when you fight Lu Bu, it's usually in the first or the second stage, depending on the character that you choose. So you're no way prepared to fight him. In Dynasty Wars 4, it doesn't matter how strong you are. You, If he challenges you to that duel, you're going to get your ass kicked if you're not prepared. 
And he's basically like, it feels like he's like a, D, a Dark Souls DS. Uh, he's like a Dark Souls boss that you're no way prepared for. It's like I haven't played Dark Souls, but I know like um, when you're when you first pop up in the world, they just throw an, an unreasonably strong, um, what is it, character or boss character at you so that you die, so that you learn that hey, if you die, you can you come back, right? It's like uh, what is it, the Grafted Scion from Elden Ring when you first start playing, which is ironically my first Dark Souls game, and. I mean, I got my ass kicked like probably millions of other people did. And then you, that's when you learn, okay, I, I come back. And I was like, all right. And then I haven't gone back to fight that sign. I'm, I'm in the capital city right now. I need to go back and play that game and actually beat it. I'm just in the capital city right now running around. I need to go back and get my revenge on that sign. I got, I got problems with that guy. Revenge is a dish best served cold. So... Um, yeah, so it's just one of those things like your introduction to Lubu. If there's one thing every Dynasty Wars game has to nail, it's the introduction of Lubu because you're basically like, this is the strongest dude in the kingdom, okay? And like, you think you're strong? No, you're not. Get waxed, especially for new characters. Which funny thing is, he feels like he's been nerfed in the newer, as the games go on, he's been nerfed. In Dynasty Wars 5, he's just, he's basically like a, not Dynasty Wars 5, in Dynasty Wars 9, he feels like a bullet sponge because of how they changed the combat system in that game. So, that's just how I feel about him. It's like, maybe the last time he was dangerous for me was Dynasty Wars 5. Because once he gets that Musu Rage, because he gets buffs too, once he gets that Musu Rage, which is ironically, this is the the game that he's showcasing. Once he gets that Musu Rage, it's a wrap, bro. Like, you, because he, he, he tanks all your things, he doesn't flinch, and he's like just murdering your health down. So, yeah, it's always just one of those things that I enjoy. Every time you come up to Hulao Gate, you're like, all right, you can run it through, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, let's see how strong Lubu is. Okay, he's effing strong. Let me go around. Okay. Kessen 2. Ooh. Kessen 2 is a strategy game developed by Koei, the mm -hmm. company behind Warriors Games, released in 2001. Kessen 2 is I have something also to say about this based he's on done. the romance of the Three Kingdoms, but leans heavily into the fantasy and magic aspects of the novel. The story of Kessen 2 is completely fictional and bears almost no resemblance to even the more fictional parts of Dynasty Warriors. Okay, let's pause. All right. Kessen 2, in my opinion, was ahead of its time. This was back when it felt like Koei Tecmo was at, like, their creative best. They were just trying stuff to try stuff. Um, the Kessen series itself, I think it's more like real-time strategy. Like, there's three games in the series. There's Kessen 1, which revolves around the Battle of Sekigahara at the end of the Sengoku Jidai period, where you're, you're following... Um, Liyasu Tokugawa, Otogawa Liyasu and Mits uh, Ishida Mitsunari in their in their attempt to control the land. You can actually play as both sides, which you start off as uh, the East, led by the Tokugawa. And um, you can get famous characters to defect, like, obviously, you know, we all know about the famous defection by Kobayakawa Hideaki, which ultimately turns the Battle of Sekigahara toward the East's uh, army's favor, right? But, um... The, the game doesn't just end after that battle. You get a, a few more things, right? There's certain characters who wouldn't defect, like, uh, how is it? Shima Sako, he will never defect. Or eventually when you see Sarada Yukimura, he will never defect, right? But um, I loved the idea that it posed, kind of showing you how you go from, if you play as the East, you go from Sekigahara, there's a few supplemental battles, then you end up at the ultimate battle of um, Osaka Castle. I think mean, they do the Summer Siege, I think they do the Summer Siege only. I can't remember. I haven't played that game in a while, which reminds me I should probably dust off my PS2 and play it again. Um, Kessen 2, like he just said, is mainly focusing on the Three Kingdoms period of or the Romance of the Three Kingdoms story. And I say story in quotations because it, it really does not follow the story at all, which is kind of crazy when you look at it. Um, certain characters are missing. Like, you don't, they don't talk about the Yellow Turbans. They don't talk about Dong Zhuo. There is a slight... Lubu mentioned, even though you don't see him in the game. Um, let's see. They gender swap uh, Zhu Chu, and they name and and uh, and and uh, the new character's name is Hu Ji. Um, Diao Chan is in love with Liu Bei. Cao Cao and Liu Bei are brothers in the story. Um, and I'm just saying this off the top of my dome. Guan, I don't I don't know why I found this funny. Like Guan Yu's afraid of frogs, right? 
Um, let's see. Mason Young, you, the lady you saw doing that flippy thing with the two blades that she cuts through that charging army. She's also like an old friend. From anything I know, I know she's just a. She's an original character to this game. I don't know if she has any importance in in actual like the romance of Three Kingdom story. Um, she's there. Um, you get your old favorites like Zhu Galeon's there. Huang uh, Huang Zhang, Wei Yan, um, Lu Bu, uh, not Lu Bu, Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Ma Chao, Zhao Yun's in it. Um, Zhang Fei has two daughters. Is it Li Li and Mei Mei? Oh no no, Li Li and Luo Luo, right? And it, it, the only reason I'm saying it's ahead of its time is because you get real time strategy plus you added a fantasy element. So let's use Jugaleon, right? When Jugaleon officially joins the story, he has magic spells. So you can throw fireballs at enemies like Firestorm. You can throw, uh, uh, I don't think he gets Fissure, but basically Fissure is like it opens up the, like your, 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 your two, mind you, these are massive armies. We're talking like thousands of soldiers are fighting. Obviously, they're not showing that. They can't, they don't have the ability to show that with the technology, but you're getting that, right? And how each army would lose is when the morale goes down, The, the obviously the army routes, and you know, whoever whoever has the highest remaining morale keeps fighting in the battle, right? So, like, uh, you have a fissure in the middle of the battle, like, you're, the enemy magician would, like, straight up open a hole in the ground, and then the enemy would fall into the hole, and then she closed the hole. You have Gale, which is basically a tornado. You have lightning, ice storms, hail. Um, what else am I missing? Um, meteor showers. There's, like, all these things you could do at the same time. Plus, you had regular, you had um, you had other officers who, who weren't warlords or magicians, so to speak. You had, um, you have the ability to duel other characters. You have raid, which basically turns your guy in the closest thing to like Broly turning legendary Super Saiyan. They get like this green ore around them and they just tear through the enemy. You have battle cry, which lowers the enemy's morale. You have rally, which increases your own army's morale. You have, um, rush, which is like your infantry charging. You have volley, which is your archers shooting a, a powerful volley to the enemy ranks. You have, charge which is your horseman charging you have all these things that were amazing um and then there's the non-monitor in the story you have they show a little bit more than you think of the Xiliang Xiliang province since there's a fight there plus they also there's also some branching paths you could take which gives the game a little bit more replayability plus you also get to play as Guan as 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 Wei and Wu they just switch up like the colors but he I but hopefully ends up talking about the colors in the in the video. And you know the iconic colors like like Wu is uh, red, Wei is blue, and Shu is green. Um, what else am I missing? Oh, Wu is also in the story, but they they get the same. They basically get the same treatment as um, Wu does in the movie. Uh, so by this point, and so when you meet Wu. Um, it'll basically be at the Battle of Cherbi, and um, Sun Quan will be the leader. There's Lu Xun, Gong Ning. Uh, my favorite character is not in it. Zhou Tai's not in it, but you have Tai Shi Tse, uh, Zhou Yu, Sun Li, which is basically Sun Shang Zhang. They just changed her name. And then she 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 technically like sneaks off to join Liu Bei. Um, what else am I missing? Uh, I feel like I'm missing a few more people, but they only they only like appear in like three battles total, I think in 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 the entire story. But there, I reason to say it, it was before. Obviously, saying all that, it was before of its time. Like I would love if Koei would remake that game and like give it like have that going with the technology of today. I think. It would make a killing. I think it'd be great. I think a lot of people would like that game. And obviously, I'm just saying that because I love the game. I still play. It's one of the main reasons I still have my my PlayStation. I just turn the game on and play it. And I try to like, oh, this oh this time maybe I'll, I'll make sure that Guan Ping and Zhou Kang ha like max out their abilities as best as I can. It's just like these things I like to try that you can't try in the games. And um, it's I, I just think that Kessen 2 has something that Koei, I think right now, is really missing in terms of creativity. Um, I'm probably going to end up making a video on that game. That game was fantastic, and I think more people should play it. Also, I don't. it's very cheap. If you still have your PlayStation, hop on Amazon and get the game and just try it. I think you'd have a good time. The story, you could, you could beat the game in like a day because, you know, um, 
PlayStation 2, I think it's, I think you'd understand, especially as you play the game, the game can be very long depending on how you are. And if you make bad decisions, you will pay for them. And also there's like things you can do before battle to make the battle a little bit easier. It's like the amount of ideas that they came up with and they did their best with the technology that they had at the time. But now if they did it now, Kessin 2 would be amazing. If anybody knows me on the Dynasty Wars subreddit, I'm the guy who's like, remake Kessin 2. I'm always that guy. Remake Kessin 2. Actually, no, remake the whole Kessin series, but remake Kessin 2, okay? Um, Kessin 3, to kind of go into that a little bit, that one covers the Nobunaga's role in um, the Sengoku Jidai, right? That one, he's presented more of, of like a, a heroic figure rather than in Samurai Warriors where he's like the Demon King, you know, basically the, the enemy of the story a little bit. And um, I kind of like how he uh, how he gets towards the battle of Honoji, where Nomunaga ultimately dies in history, and how they work with that. You can have a ton of characters. You can change some things, um, and I and also you, you get to fight some of the more famous uh, people of the period, such as Masum, uh, Date Masamune, um, Takeda Shingen, Kenshin Uesugi, or oh, Uesugi Kenshin, and those battles are hard. Because technically, no, uh, at least with uh, technically, um, there you know those are the more those are more famous people of the period, and um, I just think that everybody should just try those series of games whenever they get a chance. Dust off your PlayStation Two if you still have it, and get it popping. Or you know what, emulate it, emulate it. You'll have a great time. I promise you, playing those games. Dynasty Tactics. Ah. Dynasty Tactics is a tactical game also developed by Koei. Mm -hmm. Dynasty Tactics is on the other end of the realism spectrum when compared to Kessin 2. Mm -hmm. While it still has fictional aspects, Tactics is a more grounded version of the Three Kingdoms when compared to even Dynasty Warriors. Mm -hmm. Both Kessin 2 and Dynasty Tactics utilize some models and voice actors from Dynasty Warriors as well. Let me making them almost spin-offs of Dynasty Warriors. Let me pause here. So Dynasty Tactics, there are actually two of two of them in the series, and they both cover the the Three Kingdoms era. And in Dynasty Tactics 2, you can actually play as Lu Bu. He's a playable faction, Dynasty Wars 2. And Dynasty, the, the the second one is incredibly easy. I, I don't know why they decided to make it so easy, but the first one the first one can be very hard. Like, um, especially when you play as Liu Bei, man, and you play his story. They try their best to stick to the history at the time uh, to, since, since this came out in the early 2000s. But um, you can definitely tell if they did it today, they would definitely, you know, be more historically accurate. But the game is so... The game can be very hard. So the, you know, there are some things you could do to kind of kind of make it easier such as like cheesing capturing officers because in the first one it's way easier to capture officers and um at some point uh also cheesing with the pit and the and was it with the pit and the taunt tactics that um you can get in the story which can make battles very easy for you as well but if you're just kind of if you don't prepare accordingly or if you only spend if you only use one army to take care of all your problems you can you can really struggle so yeah, Dynasty Tactics. Bring that back as well, Koei. You got something there. You know, why not? Also, why don't you just remake the old Dynasty Wars games? You know, the fans are asking for At least the fans in the West that I can see are asking for it. But uh, I'm just barking up a dead horse now. Dynasty Warriors, originally a fight. Oh, he's talking about the first one. Well, the Dynasty first game in the series. Warriors spearheaded the one versus 1,000 hack and slash genre. It didn't start out that Sorry, way. I'm drinking my water. The first Dynasty this is going to be a long game video. It's actually a fighting game and a pretty unremarkable one at that. Let's just say that they made the right move switching genres. Mm -hmm. For yes, my they review did. on that game and reviews on every Dynasty Warriors game, check out my I played every Dynasty Warriors game video. I still would right like here. to play it one time just to kind of play it, Straight you know? Course. Just one Dynasty time for the one time. Warriors Strike Force is an interesting spinoff that is almost more similar to Monster Hunter than it is Dynasty Warriors. I never got into Strike Instead Force. Instead of fighting wars and battles, the player now does a bunch of missions throughout the game and has a Super Saiyan-like power-up that, And that's one of the main Fury reasons why, War. right there. Strike Force never really caught on, but it is a somewhat refreshing take on Warriors games. 
I always thought around Dynasty War the around the Dynasty Warrior Six era, like I don't did Kobe think that fans were just kind of getting bored of the of the series because uh, if you look at so obviously the first one was a fighter right the second one was like Dynasty Warriors proper and you could definitely see like they were oh my they're trying something new so there were some definite flaws. And then Dynasty Wars 3 fixed everything Dynasty Wars 2 did wrong. But, you know, no game is really perfect. Okay. And then Dynasty Wars 4 was like, we, I, they felt like, like we, I, we got a really good handle on this now. The graphics were way better. More characters. They, the movesets changed. Um, the idea that the, the, the Dynasty Wars 4 feels like it has a lot of replayability because of the different choices you could take plus the extra battles you could find you could play in a different in a in a in, depending on the story that you choose right plus you could play as all the optional characters finally have i guess you could say better um story modes with Lu Bu, yuan shao dong zhuo the non man even though they all all end up playing different versions of the same battles right you know each battle has their own little spin off to it um i might miss somebody else oh the yellow turbans as well so it was nice to kind of see um, what call it Dynasty Wars Four added to the table. Plus, you could create your own character in Dynasty Wars Four to run around the battlefield with. Right? Then Dynasty Wars Five was when I'm like, oh, they figured this out, right? They really figured this out. They, and then they went away from the kingdom style, where instead of just choosing a kingdom and following the whole story, they went back to the each character's their own individual story. In Dynasty Wars Five, it really felt that, like they figured it out. Dynasty Wars Dynasty Wars Four may be my favorite. But five, if somebody, if you're putting them on like a tier list, five is on the same tier. It was very well done. And then after that, six came on and then you just kind of saw like they were, they're trying to make Dynasty Wars something that I think it was already established as. And if you're going to do a massive rebrand or redesign, you need to knock it out the park. And they definitely did it. I didn't like Strike Force because that was like, it was like Dynasty Wars 6 was the first time the series felt like it was going in an anime direction and dynasty, and then playing i played a little bit of the first strike force game and i was like this is not for me you know why is everybody turning super saiyan am i fighting monsters i don't get this and also, also the fact that i've never played monster hunter so i just never liked strike force i'm not saying anybody who played the game whatever but also i think uh strike force introduced um kind of like the hub world that Dynasty Wars 7 would take and run with, Dynasty Wars 8 would, and kind of Dynasty Wars 9 kind of did the same thing, even though Dynasty Wars 9 is open world, and I hope he ends up talking about Dynasty Wars 9, because I have something to say about that, about the open world and Dynasty Wars, that is probably a lot more positive than what other people are going to say. God Seekers. Boo! God Seekers, on the other hand, was not as much of a refresher. Stra it was trash. God it was Seekers trash. is a tactical spinoff somewhat similar to Fire Emblem games. Is that what they were trying to go the for? Fire follows... Emblem? Hold on, hold on. They're trying to go for Fire Emblem? Okay. I love, I'm a big fan of Fire Emblem, and Fire Emblem, I think for most part, for the ones I, I started playing during the Game Boy era uh, uh, games. So, um... I, I think the biggest thing for every Fire Emblem game, the story has to be great, which is why I don't like Fire Emblem Engage as much. Uh, besides the fact that there's no replayability to the game once you beat it, that's it. I don't want to play it again. I'm not one of those guys who's like, I need to beat this on Madden or whatever. I just want to play the game, you know? I'm not saying I don't like the challenge, right? I always play it on Classic. Who plays it on Casual, whatever the fuck they call it? Nah, you need to know that, like, your actions have consequences. But um, if they were trying to go for um with god seekers for a phylum type of thing they did it wrong you know and also the fact that they just chose to follow Zhao Yun again they just chose the easy way out when they could have chose another character or maybe you could have just switched characters you don't always have to follow Zhao Yun and um his role you know and then they had that anime looking girl who was like a god or something i don't you know i just i just didn't like the game plus one thing when it comes to the combat system i think they gave every character in god seekers too many combos you know and I know they were trying to kind of match the Dynasty Wars thing and how you can do the different combos there. I think every character had too many combos. And it, it felt like to me, like, even on higher levels when I played God Seekers, like, my, I was never, like, truly in danger, right? I never felt that way. So, um, God Seekers, I guess I can appreciate the attempt, but you should just remake Dynasty Tactics. Just remake that instead of trying to do this. 
series poster boy Zhao Yu. It did look good though. I'm not gonna say that. Friends in a fictional story set in the Dynasty Warriors universe. The game was not very well received and left many just wanting the return of Dynasty Tactics. Yup. Dynasty Warriors Online. Oh, hold on. Let me stop it right now. Dynasty Warriors Online. Maybe the. If Dynasty Warriors 4 is my favorite, the idea of Dynasty Warriors Online like an MMO was fantastic. I've only I only got to play a little bit before the game shut down, but oh my god, I had a freaking blast. Plus, uh, I followed Macho, so I I love his move set, and um, I love playing as him. Even though, um, I I mean I love playing as him. Plus, you could switch. You, could you switch? I can't remember. It's been so long since I played. But you could switch weapons, so you could like pick up the Tomfa and all that. Plus, and also the the promotional material for the game was fantastic. Where you we saw like a created character, and they end up fighting Lu Bu. Then didn't they make like they revamped the MMO and then your character's like older in the in that like trailer for it and he fought Lubu again. Either way, it was great. And they also stuck with the Dynasty Wars five like models. And um Machao on a horse is a monster. But Machao just by himself, at least in my opinion, he's a great character and I just didn't love his moveset in Dynasty Wars five. So yeah, let's see what he got to say about this. Dynasty Wars online was fantastic. It's just a shame that it was over in the West. Dynasty Warriors Online is exactly what it sounds like. And yes, you could play with your in boys Dynasty too. Warriors it was awesome. Online, oh. You chose your kingdom and then went and fought in large scale team based. I don't know about Shu Shang Jang, but we only got English servers from 2010 to 2014. But the game was special for Warriors fans wanting a true multiplayer PvP experience. Mm -hmm. And I could be wrong, but I think it's shutting down in Asia soon as well if oh, it hasn't already. No. Oh, Renbu. Man. Oh, we don't talk about Renbu. Renbu we do not is talk about Renbu. a curse word in the Warriors community. No, it is a curse Renbu word, sir. has an actual translation, but At essentially it, it was Omega Force's attempt to revamp the combat in Dynasty Warriors 6. Instead of the typical combat where your character's weapon level determined how many moves you could perform, the new Renbu gauge now determined how many moves you could do. The Renbu system is very divisive, mostly because your Renbu gauge filled up very slowly and could drop to zero very quickly. The Renbu system also simplified an already very basic combat system. Instead of pressing square a few times and then triangle, you either just mash square or mash triangle with Renbu. For many Warriors fans, including myself, Renbu makes Dynasty Warriors 6 practically unplayable. So I know he touched on it a little bit. So Rambo, it, the Rambo system itself, um, it forced players to like seek out more battles because obviously you want to keep your Rambo gauge up because the higher your Rambo gauge is, the more moves you can perform. But there are clear drawbacks, at least for me, in my opinion. First things first, it discouraged like exploration for me. One thing I like to do in every Warriors game sometimes, I'll just run around the stage and like find all the pots and crates and whatever and break them to see if I can get extra like maybe a, like weapons or items or whatever and the rainbow system discouraged that because all of a sudden your weapons weren't as special right um most of the character designs i did not like um as well because it felt like they were more anime-ish plus you saw some um long time some characters lose their iconic weapons soon say lost his tonfas Zhou Yu lost his sword even though i'm not mad at the staff you know i like him with the staff now it took me a while but i like him with the staff because the only thing about Zhou Yu with his sword was that his extra attacks when he gets when you do his uh his charge three is or is it no his charge is it his charge three or charge four? I, I don't know exactly. His charge whatever the air clearing one, he gets to do three attacks instead of one giant attack. Um so his staff was cool. I do like Sunsei's look though in Dynasty Wars Six. I think they should bring that back. His Legionnaire kind of look, I like that, and I would like to see that with his Tonfas. Also, Sun Jian's look in Six, I kind of liked as well. But overall, Six was an attempt to kind of jazz up and reboot and uh, jazz up the formula, which I don't think it needed. Dynasty Wars has two things that I always have to work with every game: the story has to be good. Since they're essentially telling the same story, but it has to be good because as you learn more and more about the period, you can add more stuff or change things, especially if you want to add more hypothetical routes. And the combat system has to be good. The Dynasty Warriors system, like you said, the combat system is very simple, right? So when you change it, 
to try and make it harder or whatever, you diametrically change, at least in my opinion, what Dynasty Warriors is as a game. So when you change it, it has to be good. But every time they change the combat system, it fails. Dynasty Wars 6 failed. Dynasty Wars 9 failed. Just keep it the way it is. If you want to change up the attacks in the combat system, obviously I have no problem. But I think the one thing, you, it's like, it's basically like if you're playing Call of Duty and they changed how you shoot. You know? Now, instead of making it like right trigger to shoot, now you have to hold X, Y, and then the right bumper to shoot. You know? And you change, you directly change how the game is played if you change the, the, the shooting mechanics. I don't know if that, I don't know if that makes any sense to somebody, but that's how I've always felt about, um, them changing up the combat system. It's okay to keep it the same. And I understand as the roster grows, I think Dynasty Wars 9 had like damn near a hundred characters. It's like, like, it's like, it's either like 90 or I can't remember. And you have to make individual move sets for all of them. I get that it's hard. But that originality is what makes Dynasty Warriors great, okay? Sun Tse with his Tonfas. Jun Yu with that weird staff that he gets in Empires, right? Um, Guo Jia with his orb staff thing. Um, Sun Jian with his ring blade, which I love. I love his ring blade. I've, I've, the one thing I've loved, I've loved Sun Jian more and more as the, the series has progressed. I love his Dynasty Warriors 9 look. I love it. That's why I'm, I'm I'm mad that they took his ring blade away the way it was in Dynasty Wars Eight. I loved his ring blade. It's it's like perfect. I love it. But um, what was I talking about? Oh, the 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 combat system. So yeah, that I think that's the toughest part, and I, and uh, the unique characters. But you have things that you've thrown away. Like, um, Diao Chan before she had a whip, she had like this two mace thing. I know it's weird because technically was it. Tai Chi Tzu has two maces, but you can figure something out. You can figure something out. You gave Leon Chi just a straight up crossbow gun thing, right? I'm saying just figure out. I get that you don't want to be outlandish, but you've already done it once you give Diao Chan a whip, okay? Leon sure has a gun bow. Um, Xu Chang Chang runs around with two giant circle blades or chakrams. She runs around with those, okay? Who's the one? Uh, Zhang He has two, like... Um, claws like he's trying to be like a weird pseudo Wolverine or Vega from Street Fighter. Like it's it's all right. Get weird with it. For the like, Kai Wenger, like Kai Wenger, Kai Wenger, like fights with a harp. She fights with a literal harp. Zenji has a flute. Okay, the only thing more dangerous than her flute is her is her uh, charge, where she just straight up kicks you and you fly across the stage. Oh my God. Um so I, I understand it's different it's different unique weapons but you gotta add them man you gotta add them that's what makes dynasty warriors great that's what makes us want to play those characters also bring back guan ping's um dynasty wars 5 moveset please that is my favorite guan ping he's like every as great as sujian gets with every game guan ping gets even worse because i hate his heavy sword moveset now it's trash it's absolute trash so you also have the Nunwa Rapier moon set, uh, move set too. You can give to somebody, but whatever. Weapon changes. Big fan of weapon changes, by the way. Every Dynasty I Warriors think the idea was new great. Characters and weapons were added. You ever wanted to see what Zenji would look like with Lubu's halberd? Between games. Dynasty Wars Eight got Depending you. Dynasty Wars Seven too. Weapons, uh, Dynasty Wars Nine does thing. as well. For example, Sunsa losing his iconic Tanfaz is a weapon change that many fans are still upset about. Absolutely. However, there was no reason Tao to take those away. Bei That's one of those unique weapons that just like makes Dynasty Wars Dynasty Wars. Rather than each sharing a single sword move set was a great weapon change. Mm -hmm. The Fourth Kingdom. While Dynasty Warriors Actually, is... let me stop before he starts. So that random a uh, random gaming channel video, he um, he's probably gonna end up seeing looking at the screen. He's talking. He's gonna be talking about Jin, but there's actually another fourth kingdom called the Kingdom of Yan to the north. It's called the Kingdom of Yan to the northeast of of China, um, where um, the, I believe the guy there was it Gongsun Gongsun Yan. He ends up be, like declaring independence from Wei and forming the Kingdom of Yan, which run, it it's, it runs or it 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 uh it runs around for two years before Sima Yi ultimately goes up and destroys that kingdom and brings it back into Wei proper. 
But um, that's technically the fourth kingdom. That's why I'm saying after you watch this video, if you go watch the iceberg video, which the link will be in the description, um, you can go watch uh, the random gaming channel and his additions to the iceberg video. I, they were very well. They're very informative. Based on Romance of the Three Kingdoms, a fourth kingdom was included in more recent Dynasty Warriors games. This kingdom is called Jin, led by Suma Yi, Suma She, and Suma Zhao. Jin is the kingdom created by the Suma family after overthrowing Wei and then defeating Shu and eventually Wu. Jin did not last long though and fell to invaders not long after seizing control of China. Voice acting. Yeah. Voice acting has always been an interesting part of Dynasty Warriors, to say the least. The voice acting in Dynasty Warriors 3 is some of the most meme worthy early hey, 2000s. Hey, not voice too acting much of Dynasty Wars 3. Okay? The power. Ah, he's using the clip I used! Yeah, let's go! I love the Zhang Jiao voice actor for Dynasty Wars 3. He just committed, man. He's like, this is what I'm doing today. This is what, especially since he's not in the game that much, even though they do bring him back for Dynasty Wars 3 Extreme Legends where he gets his own proper story mode. I loved Dynasty Wars 3. It's, what, how am I going to get mad? Was voice acting really killing it in the early 2000s in video games? Because I'd wager to say no. So it's okay. It's okay. Leave, leave hey, leave Dy not too much of Dynasty Wars three. All right, it's one of the OGs. Leave it alone. Okay, but I think the best part about every Dynasty Wars after that, it's like by Dynasty Wars five, they had their crew, right? They had their crew of 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 people like you know that they were always going to turn to Dynasty Wars six. One of the things I can't say about Dynasty Wars six that was bad was the voice acting. The voice acting was good. Dynasty Wars seven was good. Dynasty Wars eight was good, and then Dynasty Wars nine, they just it's like they lost everyone, and I've always wondered why, what happened, because they 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 literally changed everyone. Not one of them is good, and I'm pretty sure he's probably going to end up talking about this in this part. The voice acting was pretty good from Dynasty Warriors 4 to Dynasty Warriors 8. Dynasty mm -hmm. Warriors 9, though, well, it's bad. Really bad. Yeah. This victory is all thanks to the efforts of Wang Yi. Tonight's special banquet will be in his honor. <laughs> After that, then will all of you finally begin to follow me? Of course. I wonder if these are like newer people because I mean that was bad. I think especially when you compare it to what just its previous iteration, Dynasty Wars Eight was. Uh, I even with Wang Yi, she always felt like she had like this dangerous quality to her, right? You know, her family was massacred by Ma Chao in, in according to the Dynasty Wars story. I don't know about her actual role in the period historically, and she just always had like this fascination with Ma Chao, where she was gonna she was gonna get her revenge. And I was like, yo, you can't turn her your back on. Wang Yi, man, she'll stab you in the back, man. I'm mad that they took away her uh, her weapons from Seven and gave her those piercers or whatever. They gave her those piercers, and I think in Dynasty Warriors, um, Eight Extreme Legends, or was it? I don't know. Either way, give her back her old weapons. I will gather the greatest warriors, and we will ensure that you will not be alone. I will look forward to that. Color coordination. Hmm. If there's one thing that can never happen in the Dynasty Warriors universe, it's friendly fire. Wu is red, Wei is blue, Shu is green. These colors are so iconic that I've seen Three Kingdoms media completely unrelated to Dynasty Warriors. Oh, I know, Warriors. I know the stage. This stage is um, Dynasty Wars Five Extreme Legends um, when they're fighting. Uh, it was the two main characters you can play are Zhao Yun and uh, Huang Zhang. And uh, Zhao Yun's role is to hold off the hold off uh, the Wei forces from entering the main camp before Zhu Geilian arrives, and Huang. So he's right up here holding off the main camp, and then Huang Zhang has like a sneak attack, um, where he'd be sneaking and killing like the guards so he could surprise the main camp right here. I Dynasty Wars Five introduced these like weird little missions that you could play. So you're Huang Zhang, and what you had to do, you couldn't get too close to the sentries, right? So you had to shoot them with your bow. Right. And I was like, yo, add, I kind of like this, like add more of these kind of missions. You know, they did the same thing in Dynasty Wars four when you were Huang Gai. 
um, and you were hurt and you were hurt, like carrying out his ploy uh, for the Battle of Chibi and you were hurt and you were tr still trying to like carry out the ploy, but you were getting attacked by other Wu officers. So I like that. They also, he also had kind of his own thing in Dynasty Wars 5, in his, in Dynasty Wars 5 Street Legends, in his um, uh, legend with Sun Jian and Sun Se. So I, I, I like those little things. I wish they'd do more of those. Just use this color scheme despite it being completely historically inaccurate. Archers. In earlier Dynasty Warriors games, archers are the most deadly foe you'll face, right next to Lu Bu himself. Oh, have fun you replaying battles because a group of archers casuals have no idea. Just Look at how much they just kind of wipe. They were wiping out uh, his Huang Guy's health. Very healthy. annoying. A squad of archers, especially in Dynasty Warriors three, could wipe you out if you weren't being careful. Dynasty Warriors four, they would like lock in on you, like they'd be doing. They could be like just chilling. Right. And then they see you. They said, yep, that's the guy was shooting at. And they'd lock it on you until you leave their range. And I hated that, man. So, like, you know, you just get into the habit of like, oh, the archers here. Let me take care of them first and then I'll do whatever I need to do. Extreme Legends and Empires. Okay, this is what I've been waiting for. Extreme Legends and Empires are the names of the two typical spin-off games that every Dynasty Warriors game receives. Mm -hmm. Extreme Legends is similar to adding DLC content, while Empires is a light strategy spin-off of a typical Dynasty Warriors game. All right, let's pause. Okay. Extreme Legends uh bef after before well, after was it before Dynasty Warriors six, they had this thing called Extrema, which is basically like a survival mode kind of thing where you'd run around, you could pick up like officers to fight with you, and your guy would start off with like his at his lowest like rank, the weakest he'll ever be, and then it's your job to grow him. The thing is, your between battles, your health would not come back, so you have to manage your health. You have to man. Yeah, in Dynasty Wars 5, they added the addition of iron. So you have to manage your health. You have to make sure you're, you have enough iron to upgrade your weapons because every battle gets progressively harder, right? I, I What I do, what I used to do every time when I played Dynasty Wars 5, at least the first the first few times I played, especially if I haven't played the game in a while, I just play as Lu Bu. I know it's cheating because Lu Bu, if you fight, because Lu Bu is technically a monster in the Extreme Legends, in the Extreme Mode, where if you run into him... You're going to have a bad time. But I always play as Lu Bu to kind of like, get my bearings and I switch to another character. And then you try to see how many how many stages you can clear. The most I've ever cleared, I think, is about 35 before I got bored. Um, because at that point, I maxed, I played as Lu Bu, ironically, and I maxed him all the way out. So I'm like just running through the stage. Like even my the officers that I have with me, they're just getting murked. And I'm like, hey, this, this is kind of boring at this point. But I still like the idea of Extreme Mode. Plus, Dynasty Wars 5 Extreme Legends had maybe the most popular mode to never come back in Destiny mode, which is basically like you create a character and then they go through the Dicey War story following a famous character. It's basically like your chance to have a created character story mode. And that was also ahead of its time, which might need to get its own video as well. So maybe be on the lookout for a Kessa 2 video and a Destiny mode video. And in Destiny mode, like let's say, like I always shoot. I love Guan Ping, right? So I, I, you make a character, even though the character creator was pretty shit. I was gonna say mid, but it's not. It's pretty shit. Um, you create your character, you choose who to follow, and then you get skill points. And then skill points you you use to unlock your abilities, like to be able to use your Buso attack or to be able to add more hits to your combo. Uh, to be able to use more hits for your combos, you could also have like, oh, your character has the ability to ambush. Mind you, those skills, some of those skills would only be useful in Destiny mode, but it's it was a great way to play a stage. You could you could betray you could betray your um you could betray the 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 officer you chose to follow. You could fade a defection where you you return to go to another kingdom's ranks for a little bit, then you betray them. It's it's it was awesome. I play that mode all the time because it's endlessly, at least to me, it feels like it's endlessly re uh, replayable. And then you can get a created officer for like, you ever want to do one for Zenji? I don't know why you would because I think she's a mid character. But if you want to do one, go right the fuck ahead. Do it. It's awesome. The only thing about Destiny mode is like, man, your character, your other, your other officers, they can die like, it's like comical how quickly your other, like, uh, your other, your, your other, like, members of your army can die.
So leaving you and your officer to do kind of everything. So, and, you know, they give you different objectives. Sometimes your goal is just to defeat an officer. Sometimes you have to kill the commander. Sometimes you only have to take a base. Sometimes you have to defend a base. And it's like all these different things that they just they just added. I'm like, this is awesome. Bring Destiny mode back. But Empires. This is what I've been meaning. So Dicey Wars 9 was famously open world. Maybe bringing some people who've just maybe kind of heard about the game. Bringing newer eyes into like to, into the Dynasty Warriors um, series, but it was not carried off well. That was definitely during the open world case where it felt like every game was going open world for some reason. Okay, with The Witcher Three, I played a little bit of The Witcher Three, but the reason The Witcher Three open world works because it feels alive, right? Like you never know what you could encounter, and that's what makes open world open world games great. They have to feel alive. They have to feel dynamic, you know? And the Dynasty Wars open world was not like that. They just, I think they should have waited even longer. Like, Dynasty Wars 10 should have been open world. And Dynasty Wars 9 should have just been whatever Dynasty Wars 9 could have been, whatever. Going open world could have legitimately changed Dynasty Wars. And I still think it could. I don't think the, like, the main line entry should go open world. There's too much going on, you know, in terms of story and things like that. But the world that they made in Dynasty Wars 9 was pretty good. It was beautiful at certain points. And there's some things I just didn't understand. Like, I hate the fact that whenever I play, like, you'd be on your horse going somewhere. And then your horse would just start doing circles for some fucking reason. It makes no goddamn sense, right? And also, I think the world was too big. I wonder, I always wondered, like, why didn't they just do it in sections? Like, you unlock the world in sections. So, like, if you're in, in the Yellow Term Rebellion, right? You're just in northern China. You can't go anywhere else. I not more. I don't. I would have been fine with that. Then you open the world more and more as you go, right? And um, the empires expansion, where it's basically like um, you 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 just uh, you you take a character whether you create him or not, and you just run through China, taking over China in your own way. And empires gives you the ability to create your own stories and stuff. That should be open world. And just think about it. Imagine. Like you create your character, right? And then they just walk into the open world and that's it. They just, it's like, it's like when you play Dark Souls, they're just like, or not, no, what's the one I'm using? Uh, Breath of the Wild, right? When you create, when you, when you, when Link wakes up and you run to the open world and they, they just don't tell you anything. You're just like, you just walk into that little clearing thing overlooking the entire kingdom and then you're just like, what? And then you're just, and the base of the game's like, figure it out later, bro. And, um, I think Dynasty Wars should take that same approach, right? And you just, your character walks into a town or whatever, you get the introduction, introductory cutscene, and then you you have a little bit of gold, maybe you, and you have the, your weapon, right? And then you just start figuring things out, when whether it's like you, oh, I need to start doing some quests, right? To, uh, to get some gold and things like that. And I thought that is the way Empire should be. Empire should be open world. Where you just walk around and you can meet other officers, form like your own private armies, and then you can take over a place and you gradually take over China. You can add war councils too, like they do kind of a little bit in Dynasty in the in the Empire's things where you can like, hey, you are if I'm in um if I'm in if I control the capital and I'm like, hey, uh Guan Yu, you march west and take over this city. Shang Fei, you march north and take over yeah. Um Liu Bei, you march east and take over Shu Chang, and then you start growing that way, right? And I think that could have been amazing. You can still add rebellions and things like that, and also you still have the major battles that happen, like the Old Term Rebellion, Hulao Gate, Chur Bi, Yi Ling. You can still have all these things happen depending on the time that you choose your character to um, enter the story. And you, and I, I like the fact that you're when you choose your character, you can start in different states. Whether you're a completely free officer, whether you're a ruler, or whether you serve an actual uh, an actual ruler from the time period that you choose. But I think Empire should go open world. Let me know what you think in the comments. Cow cow and cow pee. <laughs> cow cow and cow pee are both mispronunciations of the name Cao Cao and Cao Pi. Yeah. Two of the most important characters in Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> I shouldn't have to explain why these mispronunciations are infamous. We were young and dumb. We didn't know. I am Cao Pi. Like my father, Cao Cao. <laughs> Handhelds.
Dynasty Warriors received Ugh, a this game was trash. This is the only handheld game I've ever played for Dynasty about. Warriors. Dynasty Warriors games can be found on the PSP, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, and even the PS Vita. Giving like Samurai Carpal Tunnel Warriors. like simulator. Samurai Warriors is a spin-off series of Dynasty Warriors, also created by Koei Tecmo, of course. The gameplay is pretty similar, but the game takes place in the Sengoku period of Japanese history rather than in ancient China. A lot of people may not want to admit it, but I think Samurai Warriors is better than Dynasty Warriors. It's like they always find really good ways to innovate the story. And um, I don't understand why it's not even just um, with Samurai Warriors. It's like all their third party stuff because they've done work for... Fire Emblem, um, The Legend of Zelda, Berserk, Better the Hawk, um, One Piece. Um, what else am I missing? I'm missing a few other ones. But like, it's like all those other um, franchises or games get stuff that I'm like, wow, this would really work in Dynasty Wars. They just don't do it. Mm. Excuse me. Sorry. I'm drinking water right now because I'm still getting over some sickness. So I'm sorry if my voice sounds weird. But like I was saying... It's like they don't treat the Dynasty Warriors games as they should, especially since it's what really got you on the map um, in terms of... Um, obviously, there are other game series like Romance of the Three Kingdoms as well, but I'm like, Dynasty Wars, I think, is the most popular series that Koei Tecmo has, at least in the West. So, too bad they just don't... Sometimes it feels like they just don't give it the love it deserves. God of War. Yup. There is one Dynasty Warriors character that is Guan Yu, the God of, of War. Warriors, and that's Guan Yu, the God of War and God of many other things. Mm -hmm. Besides, just he's really being famous. A very like figure in Chinese culture, you'll find Guan Yu in games like Smite, yeah. Overwatch, and plenty more. He's in Overwatch. That's crazy. I know there's like a version of him in For Honor as well. He's not actually called Guan Yu. I can't remember the name of his character in in for honor but there's a version of him in there as well tier two licensed credit songs a few dynasty warriors games use licensed songs for their credits even as recently as dynasty warriors 8 these songs are all the too, planes not gonna theme lie. in dynasty wars 5 So I'm vibing right now. Attack of the Clones. Sorry about the ads. Attack I'm making sure to, to skip is them. a negative term that some Warriors fans use to describe a Dynasty Warriors game that features a lot of characters using the same moveset. Sadly, this term is still very relevant as it is a pretty good way to describe the newest Dynasty Warriors game, Dynasty Warriors 9. Okay. Let me pause here. I understand earlier when I said that um, uh, the the uniqueness of, uh, uh, of what makes Dynasty Warriors great is that each character has their own unique weapon. But also, I think we're also getting to the point that with as many characters as the Dynasty Warriors series could have in a Dynasty Warriors 10, we're talking maybe over 100 characters, potentially. Um I understand that it's going to be hard to make a, a a weapon for each and every single character. So I'm not mad at the clone move sets as 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 maybe a lot of people like Dynasty Wars three has a you know clone move sets. I think they do great. Each character kind of has their own little flavor to it. Like Dong Zhuo, um, throws his body on the ground to create a shockwave in Dynasty Warriors three. Um, Liu Bei has a three hit combo to end his thing. Sometimes that wide area slash in his. Um, um, what is it? Soon Jian has he he's the one who gets the really big slash, but also Soon Soon Se uh, not Soon Se Soon Chuan gets two hits for his. So I'm I'm not mad at the at the clones because we're getting into a point unless they re they reboot the series again, um and and cut characters like we can just get to a point like I think clones would just have to be we just have to accept that they're part of it because they're going to be way too many characters as long as they just don't do the character specific muso modes anymore there's too many characters you got to do kingdom specific now and just that gives also will give the game more replayability because hey I can play through a kingdom story with 
Zhang Liao this time instead of me playing as Xia Hodun like I did last time. So, yeah. Clones, depending on how it's done, could still work. And I'm also understanding the the problems that game des game designers will have. So if we get clones, if we keep getting clones, we keep getting clones. What can we do? I'm still probably gonna buy the game. And clones recognize each other. In older Dynasty Warriors games, you could edit cutscenes by changing out certain characters, which would result in the dialogue changing. Yeah. For certain cutscenes, some characters will acknowledge that they are going to go fight a clone of themselves. The most famous example being Guan Yu marching to fight another Guan Yu at Fawn Castle. Mm -hmm. We must fight Guan Yu. I am my own opponent? This will be difficult. The older version of the game just had this kind of like, what's the thing? Like, this originality to them, right? Where it's like you know they were just like, I guess when you're when you're when you're on the come up, you're willing to do anything rather than once you're there, like you're like I'd rather just kind of like not do anything to ruin this when you can still do some things to keep climbing, even though you've hit a point where like you're satisfied. So. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, God, that's why I love going back to the old games. You just kind of see that stuff like, for instance, Guandu in Dynasty Wars 3. So if you're playing at Cao Cao's forces, you're trying to find Wu Chao while holding off Yuan Chao's forces, right? And Guandu, the stage, um, there were four like places where the Wu Chao would be. And in every time you play the game, the Wu Chao thing would, would, would switch. So you could never, like technically, you could never guess where the the Wu Chao thing could be. And I loved that. And then it, when they had a cutscene for each character fighting Wu Chao, right? My favorite was Lu Bu because Lu Bu could not give a fuck about fighting it. He's like, oh, I don't care what this is. Go tell, go tell Cao Cao. And then Lu Bu would just keep fighting. And I loved that each character from even Yuan Chao himself would get like a cutscene, like showcasing, oh, hey, we found Wu Chao. And I loved that originality, giving every character like a chance to shine. So, God, it's just uh, those type of things are missing from the newer Dynasty Wars games. Number discrepancies. The numbers of Dynasty Warriors titles do not match in the West and in Japan. For mm -hmm. example, the newest Dynasty Warriors game in the West is Dynasty Warriors 9. That same game is called Shin Sengoku Musou 8 in Japan. This is because the very first Dynasty Warriors game, the fighting one, isn't technically part of the same series as the hack and slash games. The first Dynasty Warriors is simply titled Sengoku Musou, while Dynasty Warriors 2 is titled Shin Sengoku Musou. I think they did it, Dynasty they, they kept the numbering system in the West soundtracks. to make sure that there's no the confusion when people are buying Warriors the game in the West. Dynasty Warriors 2 and 3 are both extremely similar. Much of 3's soundtrack are just remasters and slight remixes of the songs in Dynasty Warriors 2. If I'm being 100% honest, um, it feels like Dynasty Warriors 3 is like... It's basically a remake of 2 with... It's like way better polish. You know, they, they, they really said, okay, we made something here. And instead of trying to like do something completely original with 3... They just remade Dynasty Wars 2 in a way better state, and it really works out for 3. And then 4 is when they're like, okay, now we're going to do a proper sequel right. Asia only releases. <clears throat> there are a few Dynasty Warriors games that only released in Asia. Some examples include Strike Force 2, Shin Sengoku Musou Versus, and Dynasty Warriors Online Z. Mm. Lu Lingchi. Lu Lingchi is one of the more popular Dynasty Warriors characters. Yeah, a lot of people love her for some reason. Bu. While she was first introduced to the series in 2013, she does uh, to pause for a second. She does end up getting uh, Lu Bu's Dynasty Warriors six weapon in Dynasty Warriors eight, which I think was a really good look for her and, and a good shout out to Dynasty Warriors six. Even though a lot of people didn't like that game, I love like I like the fact that she got to keep that. In Dynasty Warriors, I think she's kind of mid as a character, but iconic white hair design first debuted 10 years earlier in Dynasty Tactics 2. Yeah, it's crazy, but to my to my knowledge, she is not 
even in the novel. Luling, she's not even in the novel. At least she's not mentioned by name. So we technically don't even know Lubu's daughter's name officially. So, yeah. And in Dynasty Tactics, too, you can only get Luling Chi if you follow a certain route uh, for Lubu story mode. So, yeah. Lay Bin. Oh, Lei Mr. Bin is a character Mr. Useless from God Seekers? The tactical spinoff Dynasty Warriors God Seekers. He is a completely fictional character created to follow around poster boy Zhao Yu in all Unnecessary games. addition Lei to God Seekers. Bin, like almost every other God Seekers character, has never and probably will never appear in another Dynasty Warriors game ever again. Zhang Liao's voice change. Hmm. Zhang Liao is also one of my one favorite of characters as well. Characters. Maybe my favorite Wei character? No doubt thanks in part to some great voice acting for the character. Mm -hmm. From Dynasty <clears throat> Warriors 6 to Dynasty Warriors 8, Zhang Liao was voiced by renowned voice actor Roger Craig Smith, most famously known for Sonic the Hedgehog. Wait, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're telling me Sonic and Zhang Liao had the same voice actor? That's crazy. That's crazy right there. Smith was replaced in Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends, and Zhang Liao's voice took a nosedive as a result. Really? Strength is the ability to make that what you believe in a reality. That Yuan Shao. What a coward to be unable to face us on his own. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, Mr. Tomar. I mean, I obviously don't know anything about your work. And I maybe would have liked to see him with a new character instead of Zhang Liao, who already has an established voice actor. I wonder what happened. Um, it's a shame that we lost Mr. Mr. Smith as um, Zhang Liao's voice actor, because you can definitely tell. You can definitely see the difference, and I think it's for the worst, which is a shame. Unique NPCs. Yup. Despite the already massive amount of characters in Dynasty Warriors, hundreds and hundreds of NPCs are needed to truly tell the Three Kingdoms story. Mm -hmm. A few NPCs are given a unique design when compared to the hundreds of generic NPCs. Dynasty Warriors 9 had four unique NPCs that were eventually turned playable through paid DLC. So one of them is this girl right here. Her name is Dong Bai, I believe. Then there's Yuan Shu, Xia Ho Ji, and who's the fourth? Oh, Hua Shang as well. They were turned into paid DLC. So, I mean, obviously, if anybody watched my Dynasty Wars movie review, you saw Hua Shang's role in the story. And Dong Bai, I believe she's Dong Zhuo's daughter, right? And she's like a spoiled goth, lo like spoiled goth Lolita brat in Dynasty Wars Nine. I haven't touched her character, uh, touched her as a character at all. Like not, I, I don't even want to see her on the battlefield, let alone play as her. So I just think she's she's not a good character. But Yuan Shu, one day I'll probably end up getting to him once I download Dynasty Wars Nine again. But Hua Shang interests me. I'm I'm very curious to see how he is uh, portrayed in the in the games. Dynasty Warriors 6 Animification. Yes, not a big fan of this. With Dynasty Warriors 6, characters began but to have much look more over-the-top nice and, and frankly anime-style designs rather than more relatively realistic designs. Dynasty Warriors 6 easily has the most over-the-top designs, though. Bro, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then, bro, what, what are those, show you? What are those, bro? Just wear some pants. You are wearing pants. Just... Just wear some regular ass shoes, bro. What are we doing here? Also, weird to just have a whole ass conversation after they just murdered. Well, one of them's not dead. He just punched him in the face, right? How about we take care of the one dude? But like, look at Joyu's fit, bro. It is trash, especially when you look at Sensei's fit. The boots a little high for me, my guy. But I'm not mad. I'm not as mad as bro. What is this, bro? Why'd you? Why'd they put a gradient on it? There's a lot of things about Dynasty Wars 6 show you I did not like, but I'll get over it. And Dynasty Never Warriors played that game has again. slowly anyway. been returning to more realistic designs. Yeah, they did that. They did a lot of that in Dynasty Wars 9. Names. Along with mispronunciations, some characters' names in Dynasty Warriors are also misspelled. Two prominent examples are Shu Zhu 
mm-hmm. which would more accurately be Zhu Chu. Why don't they just Zheng change Jiao, that? Why which not? Would more right? accurately That's... be Zhang Ju. I really? Think. Forgive me for butchering all of these pronunciations myself. Zhang Jiao's been running Some around weapons. since the first game, so. Some Dynasty Even when you Warriors play games them, so. include weapons with silly skins that you can unlock in game. Some examples of this include the chain and sickle weapon becoming a gas pump, the chakrams becoming lifesavers, and the throwing axes becoming bowling pins. If I remember correctly, Sun Jian. Was, was that the thing? Was, was his freaking. Was his voice that. Was that laugh so dumb? Whatever, I guess. But, um. Was it Sun Jian's had a unique whip and when like his thing would turn into like a saw? I was like, this is this is dumb. This is dumb that I'm beating somebody's ass with a saw right now or something like that. They were, Dynasty it just, Warriors uh, 1 animations carried over. While Dynasty Warriors 1 doesn't have a lot in common with the hack and slash titles, there are a few moves carried over from Dynasty Warriors 1 that are still in Dynasty Warriors to this day over 20 years later. Dynasty Warriors 3 Shoot Zhu opening. Mm-hmm. Chu Zhu gets I wonder why they took those Easter opening things that you could make. Opening cut oh, scene so. In Dyn- so in the older in up to Dynasty Wars 5, you could create like a you could create like a cutscene, right? They give you like these certain situations and then you can make a cutscene with different characters, right? And I wonder why they took that out. I love those things. Like you can kinda like make a a little quick cutscene for yourself, and it's like a character show off or whatever. Dynasty Wars Four, in my opinion, was the best one of the ones that we got because um, of the things you could do with it. But Dynasty Wars Three was pretty good because it was unique in its own way, which he's about to talk about. Dynasty Warriors Three. If you place Juju in the elephant riding scene of the edit, he won't ride an elephant like every other character in mm-hmm. the game. Instead, he'll charge on the ground along with the elephants like the maniac he is. Yes. Lu Bu and Diao Chan. Lu Bu and Diao Chan have an interesting mechanic in most Dynasty Warriors games. In battles where both Lu Bu and Diao Chan are your enemy, defeating Diao Chan will typically send Lu Bu into an enraged state where he becomes nearly impossible to defeat without abusing certain game mechanics. Yeah, you ever thought Lubu was too easy? Find the Achan, kill him. Now you're now you're gonna have a good time. Jimquisition. Mm-hmm. James Stephanie Sterling with their show Jimquisition is perhaps the most popular YouTuber to regularly cover new Dynasty Wars. Yeah, games I wish when they released. I think I remember one time I saw in like a video Angry Joe did where he was playing Dynasty Wars nine in the background. And I was like, man, I would love to see him take on a, a Dynasty Wars video one day to kind of just kind of see what his take on it would be. Because he clearly knows about the series if he's playing it. But, I mean, um, he's the, obviously the man's busy with his own thing. But I've watched the Jimquisition and how they've been worried about the state of Dynasty Wars for a while. And even when I was watching, I was like, uh, at the time... I, like, I didn't listen to them. I can't remember what I was doing, but I was busy. But then a lot of things that they said about the series kind of turned out to be true in terms of, like, Dynasty Wars is losing its soul. And I, I do like the fact that at least we get one really big, um, like, video game YouTube reviewer like to, that tackles this thing. Because I like Skill Up and how he reviews, but I'll be 100% honest. I don't ever see Skill Up ever doing a Dynasty Wars review. Ever. I'm even, uh, was it Game Ranks did a Dynasty Warriors before you buy, like a Dynasty Wars 9 before you buy, so uh, it's just a fan of Dynasty Warriors 9 even features as their thumbnail for their eighth highest viewed video ever. Yeah, when they just. Their just, scathing review of Dynasty Warriors that that game. 9 is in their top 20 most viewed videos as well. They're not a complete hater of Dynasty Warriors, though, as they do have some videos praising and defending the franchise. Gan Ning and Lu Meng's Ages. A running joke in Dynasty Warriors is Gan Ning calling Lu Meng an old man. Now, if you just look at their character models, that makes sense. Lu Meng looks older, but that's not necessarily the case. Mm-hmm. While Gan Ning's specific birthday is unknown, 
it's much more likely than not that he is older than Lu Meng. Just strange given their relationship is usually a major part of Wu's story mode, and it's a huge historical inaccuracy. Yeah. Whipped Suma Yi. Oh, I have something to say about this. Yi is one of Dynasty Warriors' most longest tenured characters, uh-huh. having been around since Dynasty Warriors 2. For the most part, Suma Yi is portrayed as a ruthless strategist and the only equal to the brilliant Zhuge Liang. In Dynasty Warriors 8, Suma Yi's wife, Zhang Chunhua, was added to the playable cast. From that moment, Suma Yi's character completely changed. Mm-hmm. His character became far less about scheming his way to power and more about being afraid of his wife. I think it's supposed to be funny, but it really just ended up ruining one of the better, morally gray characters in the franchise. And so I... (sighs) And so now, I wish to announce my withdrawal from public life. Okay, so... Like he said, Sima Yi always felt like the man had big plans, right? Whether it was he was fighting for way or whatever, like the one thing, one of my favorite Sima Yi scenes, ironically, is, um, I think, was it, was it, um, I think, was it Dynasty Wars 5 or was it 6? Like where you see, um, at his, during Sao P's ending, if I remember correctly, was it that, or was his own, where like you see Sima Yi like bowing to Sao P and then they, the camera focuses on Sima Yi and you just see the ambition in his eyes where I'm like, oh my God, this guy cannot be trusted because in Dynasty Wars 5, you never have a chance to establish the kingdom of Jin, right? So it's just like, this guy cannot be trusted. And then in eight, they just straight up neuter his character. He still got to, he's, there's still glimpses of the Sima Yi that fans got to know and love. But if you're going to introduce Zhang Chunhua, right? Just have her scheme as well with him, right? It would be nice to kind of, you don't have to like neuter one of the, one of the better characters, especially maybe one of the better strategists since they're, especially since they took his fan away and gave him those claws. Um, but now he has that weird s- staff sash thingy. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it, but, um, what's th- like the reason that he lets his sons take over, which old Sima, you never, he would have just done it himself was like, Oh, his wife basically forced him to, which kind of, it would just ruins him as a character, you know? And also, I th- also think it just, it makes me like unnecessarily hate Zhang Chunhua as well. Like if they both scheme together, Right. I thought that'd be awesome. So you have the entire family scheming together, except for, you know, Sima Zhao, because my guy just likes the vibe. Sima Zhao is just chilling, bro. He's just chilling. He's like the the one he's like the one guy everybody in the family's kind of embarrassed of. But when shit gets real, Sima Zhao is just as good as they are. So, I mean, in fact, he's the one who gets ends up beating and taking over shoes. So. It's just one of those things I just hated what they did to his character, man. Just let him keep scheming, bro. And then Zhang Chunhua schemes with him. Then obviously the sons and whatever happens, happens. Whether he, like when Sima Yi dies, the sons just take over. Ugh. Face glitches. Back in 2014, Dynasty Warriors went viral online with the release of Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires and the infamous face glitches. The most iconic of those glitches being the duck face glitch that created characters could get. See, I never got this glitch when I when I when I played uh, Dynasty Wars Eight Empires. Oh man, it, it's fucking freaky. Ugh. Oh my god, I have like ugh. what Not is a that? Great reason to go viral. Ah. Tier three. Mm-hmm. Pepsi Lu Bu and 7-Up Zhao Yun. 7-Up Zhao Tecmo Xiao is Yun? no stranger to some odd promotional crossovers. One of their most famous being Lu Bu drinking a Pepsi Nex. A more obscure promo was Zhao Yun posing with a 7-Up. He would be a 7-Up. Hold up. He goes a bit farther too. What is this? They gave him 7-Up armor? Bruh, look, first of all, first of all, this is the scene... Where the three brothers are fighting Lu Bu, and then Zhou Yu, uh, Zhao Yun pulls up to help them. First of all, this is disgusting. This is an ugly ass armor, and he has seven up right there instead of his other. 
Bro, look at Guan Yu's face, bro. He's like, bro, get the fuck out of here with that dumbass armor. I'm sorry I'm cussing right now, but like, get this shit out of here, bro. What is, what is this? The dark green? Oh, bro, he looks terrible. If you're going to give him the armor, at least have his fucking weapon plume match the I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Received a seven up costume that is Dynasty Warriors disgusting. Bushi and Nuwa. Yup. Modern Warriors fans may recognize the rapier Bushi and Nuwa from the Warriors Orochi series, but they actually got their debut as secret characters back in Dynasty Warriors three. I always thought While that was the characters weird. Characters do not return in Dynasty Warriors four or five. Their moves. Do you not have any new uh, Fushi? So in- Fushi was the first character in Dynasty Wars to get the great sword move set. In Dynasty Wars 4, he has a pretty awesome grab move with it. And he's probably going to mention, but they do come back in Warriors Orochi 2 as as original characters to that game, and then they, they stay in the series um, after that. So, yeah. In those games. Hideyoshi and Nobunaga in Dynasty Warriors 1. Hmm, that's Samurai interesting. Samurai Warriors fans will definitely oh, are you, are you recognize serious? Samurai Warlords Nobunaga and Hideyoshi as main characters from those games, but they actually first appeared all the way back in Dynasty Warriors 1 as secret characters, before Samurai Warriors even existed. The reason what? they are featured in this game is because two of Koei's franchises, Nobunaga's Ambition and Taiko, both featured those characters way back in the 90s. Lu Bu and Co. in Samurai Warriors. There are a few instances of yeah. Dynasty Warriors characters appearing in Samurai Warriors games. Oh, the that's Dynasty Warriors. And he has his fourth level Lu weapon too. Oh my god. In Samurai Warriors 1. Okay. J- Let me pause real quick. So, Lu Bu, I love that they that, that, that they used to do this. In the first Samurai Warriors game, um, there's a survival mode where you descend as many floors as you can without dying, right? And um, every five floors, you would get a, like, a book. Like, basically be one of um, Miyamoto Musashi's, like, book of the Ten Rings, or is it Five Rings? I can't remember exactly. So, you like, every one you get, like, the book of water, the book of whatever, right? And then I remember, like, they were, like, um, reading up online, um, how far do you have to go to get the last book? Like thirty floors. I remember one day I took out. Um, I took a maxed out Sanada Yukimura, um, and just went and just did it. And you would be able to save every five floors, right? And I get up to to floor thirty, and the best part, Samurai Warriors did this. Where like when you'd fight in a stage that has a castle, right? You so you'd fight outside the castle, then you'd go inside the castle. And you had to scale the castle, and I loved it. Azuchi Castle, by the way, fantastic fantastic design at least in my opinion right so you're going down the floors and then floor 30 you'd go toward where the final boss is what they do the final boss of the floor there'd be a door below it so you couldn't see who it was right and then when you walk up toward the door the door would automatically open and you have to fight the final boss floor 30 lubu's just sitting there waiting for you fucking maxed out he's already in his in the samurai warriors equivalent of um of like like angry or hyper or whatever so he, he doesn't even flinch to your to your weapons or whatever and he's strong as fuck and i remember i got to floor 30 my yukimura was almost dead i ran around the whole floor looking for meat buns or whatever to eat so that my so i could get my health back and all of a sudden you just hear that you see the sort the the door rise up and you just hear lubu's theme and i'm like oh you have got to be kidding me and lubu just chased my ass the entire stage if i remember correctly and i'm like all i would do is charge up my muso hit him with it and run the fuck away charge up my muso hit him with it and run the fuck away because lubu i was not taking any chances like i said he has his fourth level or technically if if they're using the dynasty wars 4 one so he'd be his 10th level weapon so he's already got the best weapon he can have He, he looks menacing and i'm like oh my god this is awesome. I wish they did something like that for Dynasty Wars, where maybe you could do a survival mode and Hona Tadakatsu pulls up, and you're like, oh, because basically Hona Tadakatsu is the Lubu of Samurai Warriors. So I wish they would bring those kind of things back, man. I remember there used to be people used to say, oh, if you get all like the five or six books, you could play as Miyamoto Musashi, which you could in the first Dynasty Wars game. But they also said there is a way for you to play as Lubu, and then that also turned out to be false without cheats or something like that. But it was an 
awesome, awesome, like, surprise when you're playing this, the story mode. And then the mode where you saw uh, Lubu fighting, uh, was it Mori Ranmaru on the street? That's also another, like, a versus mode thing that you could do. So, oh, my God. Jin isn't really Jin. The Jin Kingdom featured in Modern Warriors games isn't really Jin at all. A quick history lesson. The Jin we see in Dynasty Warriors led by the Suma family is still Wei. Jin wouldn't actually form and overthrow Wei until after the death of Suma Zhao and the fall of Shu. I'm not sure if the name Jin is ever even mentioned in any Dynasty Warriors game outside of just selecting their story. Uh, that is not true. If I remember correctly, they do say they do mention Jin a few times in Dynasty Warriors 7, but I see where he's coming from though. Mode. Suma Yan. Yep. The Speaking winner of, Jin, of Dynasty Warriors, Suma Yan, so to speak. The son of Suma Zhao. While Suma Yan has never and may never be a playable character, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, you'll we never do see him. see the back of his head in the ending cutscene of Dynasty Warriors 7 for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Uncredited voice actors. With a lot of characters, this naturally a comes Wars a lot of voice song. actors. While all of the iconic Japanese voice actors for the series are well known and properly credited, the same can't be said for the English and not to mention other language voice actors that lended their talents for the franchise. Some of these uncredited voice actors include Roger Craig Smith, Yuri Lowenthal, and other well-known anime voice actors. Dynasty Warriors 5 Endings Depending on the difficulty you complete a character's story mode on in Dynasty Warriors 5, oh, I you never get knew a that. different ending quote. The quotes range from being low-key insulting when completing a story mode on easy to some pretty high praise for beating the game on oh. chaos mode. Yeah, I never, I never knew that. Uh, I, maybe I just because I didn't pay attention in the end. Because once you, I play uh, a character storm mode, you obviously would get all his weapons, and I would just play on hard mode after that. That's crazy. That's crazy to think. Bootleg mobile games. While Dynasty Warriors has had a couple official mobile games, there are dozens and dozens of. I Dynasty try to stay away Warriors from mobile games in games. general. I might you know, just have to make a video on these someday. They just, they're just pretty these are advertisement mid. Or but Lu, Liu Bei looks great, garbage, by the way. That's a great character design. The Dynasty Warriors characters. That's supposed to be Shu Huang he's fighting? Dynasty Warriors 2 Free Mode Code. Huh. Being an old game, Dynasty Warriors 2 has cheat codes. They're mostly used to unlock characters, but there is one cool code that allows you to choose look whatever how old side this game in looks, whatever man. battle you want to be on. You can fight in an enemy army Just remake that would the be whole impossible series, bro. to fight with otherwise in the standard story mode. Ambition mode only conversations. Mm -hmm. Dynasty Warriors 8 is a great game for a lot of reasons, but one reason is its attention to detail. This is highlighted perfectly with ambition mode. Okay, let me pause here for a second. So ambition mode um, was like something to keep like players playing as as uh, after they beat the story mode um where you would have to w go around the land like getting materials and stuff to create a palace for the emperor who's going to come and visit you and then so basically you choose a character to start off with all right i cheated i used lubu because i didn't want to end up fighting him in the story mode in the ambition mode because i didn't know how they were going to use him so i use lubu right and then you build up like your hub world so you have a stable some a blacksmith barracks all these things then they also had a place where, like you know these characters who just don't get like guan ping he's never going to get a lot of burn in the story but you still want to max him out so you throw him in this training area where you could keep training and leveling up as you level up as well so and then eventually the goal of the ambition mode is to get the emperor to visit once you completed the palace which is what you do and i if i remember correctly they do add a they do a little bit more of an add-on to it to make you kept to kind of keep you playing longer but it's not really worth it where certain pairs of characters will have completely unique dialogue with each other not found elsewhere in the game. Some dialogue is between characters that would never interact otherwise, which is really cool. I like that. Kai Wenjai's Erhu. For Western Dynasty Warriors fans, Kai Wenjai's debut was in Dynasty Warriors 7 along with her harp weapon. However, Wenjai actually debuted in the Asia-only release Shinsengoku Musou Multi-Raid 2, the sequel to Dynasty Warriors Strike Force. In Multi-Raid 2, Wenjai uses an Erhu, I think that's how you pronounce that, 
as her weapon. As of making this video, the Erhu weapon has never returned to the Bring it back and give it to someone. Bring it back to give it a female give it to a female character. Why Death not? by sitting. <laughs> In a game what? about war spanning over half a century, there's going to be a lot of deaths. Mm -hmm. Throughout the Dynasty Warriors games, there have been plenty of iconic death cutscenes, but in Dynasty Warriors 9, a lot of characters just die. Did Gardening just die? And talking. And the way they sit just sucks. I haven't out gotten to this point in Dynasty Wars 9. It is such a slog to get death. through. That's how Dynasty he just dies? For Hulao Gate opens. Huh. In Dynasty Warriors 4, if you fail the objective to open Hulao Gate, the gate just opens anyway, leaving Yuan Shao and the player very confused. Disc Swap hmm. Back in the PS2 era, Dynasty Warriors had a pretty cool disc swap system. If you owned both the Dynasty Warriors game and its Extreme Legends game, you could carry over your progress from one game to the other by literally swapping oh, the discs me. in your PS2 when prompted. Mm -hmm. Yujin and Li Dian's nah, voice talking. actor. Yujin and Li Dian are relative newcomers to the franchise, but their defining character traits are that the two of them are best friends. Since they are best friends and are almost always fighting together and interacting, it is kind of awkward that Dynasty Warriors 9 gave the two the same English voice actor. Excuse they me? They sound very similar to say the least. If we're talking about faults, I was not as patient as I should have been. That's not what I meant. I'm sorry to have brought this up again. Forgive me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> There's the castle up ahead. That was mid as fuck. That was a mid as fuck cutscene. Meat buns are a common health item found in almost, if not every, Dynasty Warriors game. They are also often used for comedic situations. If I'm being 100% honest, I think Dynasty Warriors, when it comes to comedy, is bad. Like, really bad. I think... It's like, it's like if you were to do a comedy stage... Go hire like some comedy writers. Go hire us like some good comedy writers. We're gonna do a comedy stage, cause in if them doing it in house, it's bad. It's bad. Like I can't remember like a good one off the top of my head, which should say something. Realism. One of the many problems with Dynasty Warriors Nine is the amount of shared move sets between characters and the lack of some iconic weapons from the series past. Mm -hmm. In an interview, producer Akihiro Suzuki said that many weapons weren't brought back for the sake of realism. No, you were being this lazy. Surprisingly, did not go over well with fans. And why should it? Why should a game where you murder thousands of soldiers exactly. in minutes have any concern with realism? Yeah. It's just a blatant lie. Yeah, just Dynasty come on, bro. What are we doing? Outfits in Dynasty Warriors 3. Oh, I know about this. I know about this. In Dynasty Warriors 3, you can unlock certain characters' outfits from Dynasty Tactics 2. Cool little feature. Okay. So, the, the characters who would get, um, I believe, Lu Bu would get his Dynasty Tactics uh, outfit. You're also the first time you get to see Lu Bu's forces in a different color. They've That's when we first see Lu Bu's forces in their, in their silver color. Right, I liked, I like that. I can't remember the other characters that get one. Who gets, who gets another one? Oh, it doesn't matter, it's not important. Let's keep going. Ugly children. In Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires, a feature was introduced where your character could have children with their spouse. The child's design would be randomized <laughs> using a few base features from your character and their spouse, and the resulting design was almost always I always well, I always deleted them. Ugly. I always deleted the ch the, the children Dynasty at the end of every Warriors playthrough. Movie. Yes, there is an official Dynasty Warriors movie. Go watch go watch my review on my channel, please. It's not very good. The casting is generally pretty bad. The effects aren't impressive. Many iconic characters are missing, and the movie introduced some nonsensical plot points to the Dynasty Warriors story. On the bright side though, the costumes are cool, and the movie does feature some Dynasty Warriors music. The movie oh, also teased a sequel, but I can't see that ever happening with the reception it got. I think, if you're looking at this like, is this a good movie? He's absolutely right. It's a bad movie. 
But like I said in my review, this movie isn't for everybody. It's for Dynasty Warriors fans. But even then, a Dynasty Warriors fan will find problems. Like you said, missing characters. Like, where was Zhang Liao during the Battle of Hulao Gate? He actually fights in the battle. He fights in the conflict with Dong Zhu and the Coalition, right? The missing, uh, Sun Jian's missing retainers. Uh, Huang Gai, Cheng Pu, uh, Han Dang, all the all of them are missing, right? The Xiaho brothers for for Cao Cao, they're missing, like they're and I get and I and I get that, um, and I get that obviously that's extra characters and things for them to do. But you had Zhang Fei in the movie. I mean, what the guy said like what seven lines the whole freaking movie, right? You could just done the same thing for a lot of characters, but. I also think the people who decided to make the 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 movie completely underestimated the work needed to get done. Like I like I said in my thing, Dynasty Warriors deserves uh, uh, not say deserves it needs maybe an MCU level of of like of like work to get to get the story done right. There's so many things going on, right? Cao Cao, Liu Bei, the Soon family. Um, you still have, and even like individual battles might deserve entire individual battles might deserve entire movies. Chang Bon, Chur B, uh, He Fei, Yi Ling, the Nan Man conflict with Shu. There's so many. Zhu Geleon's death at the woods at, at the Wuzhang Plains. There's so many things that I, I, I just think they completely underestimated. They should even tease the sequel. They even introduced Dia Chan, and she maybe she also said maybe like five to seven lines in the whole thing. So there's so much going on that I think they really should have just focused on even the Yellow Turban Rebellion by itself and really established the characters. And then the next battle could, the next movie could be about the, the conflict with Dong Zhuo. Then you go from there. But they did it. They rushed the fuck out of it. They skipped some crucial scenes and the casting was not as good as it could have been do i need to talk about guan yu again and how bad i thought guan yu was right mm-hmm. but he's right some of the costumes were fantastic the sword castle was dumb but what can you do man that's you know it's a one and done and they ruined their one shot Banner chronicle lifespans and weapons while dynasty warriors is historical fiction it doesn't follow history very closely Throughout the series, many characters use weapons that certainly did not exist in the time period. Several characters also live much longer than their actual lifespans as well, especially in the older games. Yeah, but what can you do? You're trying to make a game. Every year, Koei Tecmo releases a Dynasty Warriors April Fool's joke. Some yeah. notable examples include a skinny Shu Shu. That was weird. Email and unmasked Wei Yun. That was also and weird. And Wei with hair. I just straight up started dying Dynasty when I saw Warriors that. Four Wei's Chirby fire attack. Huh. In Dynasty Warriors Four, if you're playing as Wu or Shu and completely mess up the fire attack on Wei. Cao Cao will instead unleash his own fire attack against you. What? Re- wait, 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 baby. wait, really? I've never, I've never uh, messed up the the fire attack during the Battle of Chibi when you're the allied forces because I think it's very hard to actually just do that. Maybe the hardest thing is to get Pang Tong's thing done when you chain the fleet together because of how far it is up the map if you don't have a horse. But other than that, it's not that hard, at least in my opinion, but I'm just talking. In the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel, Zhao Yun rescues Liu Bei's son, Liu Shan, at the Battle of Chang Ban. This is typically one of the most important battles in Dynasty Warriors. Mm-hmm. When Zhao Yun returns Liu Shan to Liu Bei, oh, what happened? Liu Bei drops his son in the novel in protest of Zhao Yun risking his life to rescue Liu Shan. Yeah. While this never happens in the game, it's pretty fun to think of Goody Two Shoes Liu Bei <laughs> spiking a baby right in front of Zhao Yun. What happened to the quality of the Two video? Four. We were good. Did I mess up? Multi Raid 2 characters. Mm. Vincent Goku Musou, Multi Raid 2, features of. Isn't this just a uh, Strike Force? In a Dynasty just Warriors under a different game, name? Though some of them would make it over to the Warriors Orochi series. Mm. I believe Rise one of, of them Kingdom. is Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong is one of the characters from Multi Raid who goes into uh, Warriors Orochi 2. Collab. To promote Dynasty Warriors 9, Koei Tecmo agreed to an official crossover with Rise of Kingdoms that sent Lu Bu and Diao Chan into the mobile game. 
Hmm. I've never played this game. Never and played it never either. Will. But their designs honestly aren't the worst thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Character image songs. In Japan, Dynasty Warriors characters have what are called image songs. These are original songs created for these characters sung by their Japanese voice actors. Wait, you these have the voice actors sing them? In game, but they're typically Is that a good idea? Albums. Some of them honestly slap. Oh. I like that one. Vibe a little bit. And that's the actual voice actor you're telling me. Hmm, not bad. Dynasty Warriors Mahjong. There is a Dynasty Warriors Mahjong game. It has some cool music remixes in it. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> Dynasty Warriors 4 Huang Zhu. In Dynasty Warriors 4, Huang Zhu's portrait does not match his actual character model at the Battle of Shia Ko. Really? It could be a simple mistake. Never but noticed it's that before. Odd. Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires English Voice Glitch. For some reason, a single English voice line can be found in Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, a game that only has a Japanese dub. Diao Chan's Defection. In Dynasty Warriors 3, if you are Dong Zhuo on Hulao Gate and all of your officers are defeated besides Dong Zhuo, Lu Bu, and Diao Chan, Diao Chan will defect against you and say a couple This is as far as I'm supposed lines. to go. Oh, Literally, they missed the a D. The developers didn't plan for many players to get this event. Dynasty Warriors 4 Beta. There's a Dynasty Warriors 4 beta that you can technically play right now. Huh. It's all in Japanese, but it features quite a few differences from the full release, like some soundtrack changes, for example. It's a cool piece of Warriors history, and I'm glad it's archived on the internet. Dynasty Warriors 3 Unused Content Dynasty Warriors 3 has a lot of unused content, mostly in the form of unused dialogue. There are oh, some wow. stages only I'm featured sorry, for a can't stop yawning for some reason. So mode, but for some reason Koei ended up I'm still I'm still enjoying the video. I just I feel bad for you on it. playable there. Mhm. Mm Dummy. In Dynasty Warriors 5 on the Tian Shui battle, when mm. you go to fight Jiang Wei, a text box will appear that just says what? Dummy. It's almost certainly a placeholder where a voice line from Jiang Wei was supposed to play. Mhm. Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive characters. In Dynasty Warriors Strike Force, Ryu Hayabusa and Ayane from Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive both appear as guest characters. I believe they're NPCs um, in, I think, Multi Raid 2, they're NPCs, but they become fully playable in Warriors Orochi 3. I lost my shit when. Uh, Ryu pulled up in Warriors of Archie 3 and he's about to kill uh, Tyra Kiyomori. And he was one of the first characters in that game that I maxed out. I love playing as Ryu. But that game had a lot of guest characters. Like Joan of Arc from Bladestorm is there. Achilles from the Koei Tecmo Trojan War game is there. You have uh, obviously Ryu Hayabusa. You have a girl from Soul Calibur is in it. I can't remember. Is it Cassandra? You have her in it. You have obviously Ayane from Dead or Alive, and and back in the it was it late two thousands, Dead or Alive was more known for its volleyball game than anything else. If you if if the it, well if the OG members know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about, you just have to go do a Google search. I'm not I'm not saying nothing else. Um, was there another guest character? Or am I am I tripping? Huh, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. They had, they had, they had a ton. Shin Sengoku Muso Blast. Shin Sengoku Muso Blast is a strange mobile spin off game released only in Japan. The game itself isn't notable and it only lasted a couple years, mm. but what the game gave us were dozens of official portraits and designs for generic characters. Okay. Some of these designs went on to be used on playable characters. Most notably with the four unique NPCs in Dynasty Warriors 9. 
Wow, that's a pretty good G1 shoe right there. What's he holding in his hand? There's, is that like wine? That looks good. Oh, Suma they did Zhao add his Wang Yuanji mustache. Suma Zhao and Wang Yuanji are the. I'm a big fan of Suma Zhao. My guy just vibing, bro. That's all he does. He's just vibing until the responsibility is thrown actually on him. Chen, Lu Bu will chase after you. But did you know that Xiao and Yuanji apparently have a similar mechanic? Oh if no, I'm so scared. Wang Yuanji in Dynasty Warrior Seven. Suma Zhao will charge straight for you in revenge. Yeah, and I'll kick his ass. Guo He's no Lu Bu. Dante. Huh? In Dynasty Warriors 8, Guo Jia's alternate costume looks suspiciously similar to a certain Devil May Cry character. Are you serious? The best Dynasty Warriors game. It's Dynasty Warriors 4. With the Dynasty Warriors franchise having well over Is Dynasty games, Wars 4? I will take Dynasty Wars 5 as a substitute. Which game is best. It's Dynasty Wars 4. Certain games do stand out from the rest, but each game is good and bad in its own ways. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, though, the best game is definitely Dynasty Warriors 5. The Forest Lady. In the Dynasty Warriors movie... Oh, he's going to talk about the Lady in the Sword Castle, right? The Master of the Sword Forge Castle was introduced. Though she might be better known as the Forest Lady. Oh, that's, that's what they call her, huh? as a way to explain the character's Musou attacks, but it just felt really forced and unnecessary. Yes, opinion. it just doesn't matter. You already have these people doing ridiculous stuff. Just let them have their weapons from the beginning. She didn't need to be included in the movie at all. Since she is not mentioned in any Dynasty Warriors game. Is Guan Ping adopted? Yes, he literally says that in Dynasty Warriors 5. Ping's novel. Guan Ping is the adopted son of Guan Yu. In actual history, it's I feel like you reached with this one, my guy. He literally says in Dynasty Wars 5. In Dynasty Warriors, it's back and forth. In a couple games, Guan Ping is stated to be adopted, but in other games, it's not mentioned whatsoever. So you want them to this mention it in every game? By the fact that Guan Ping looks a lot like Guan Yu and Guan Yu's other biological children. Shu Zhu in the wrong outfit. For some reason, in Cao Cao's ending in Dynasty Warriors 5, Shu Zhu is wearing his outfit from Dynasty Warriors 4. Huh. This would be a really strange and difficult mistake to make, so maybe this is just an easter egg given Shu Zhu's past easter eggs? Tier 5 Voice Actor Strike Voice Actor Strike We've already talked about Dynasty Warriors 9 and it's frankly awful voice acting. But what's the cause behind Koei Tecmo bringing in an entirely new English voice acting cast? Are you telling me they were striking at the time? It was because of the 2016-2017 voice actor union strike. Really? While there's no concrete proof to confirm this, many Dynasty Warriors 9 voice actors have come out and said they had to perform lines on an extremely tight time crunch with no beforehand preparation. Couple that with the fact that all of these voice actors were unknown at the time, I think it all points to the voice actor strike being to blame. Mm. Suma Zhao is adopted. In Dynasty Warrior 7, Suma Zhao looks almost nothing like his father, Suma Yi, and his brother, Suma Shur. He also acts nothing like them either, being polar opposites to the two of them. Yeah, bro, was just chilling. somewhat fixed in Dynasty Warriors 8, where Suma Zhao's mother, Zhang Chunhua, shares his likeness, but it's still fun to think that Suma Zhao might not even be a true Suma at all. Ma Dai and Wei Yan Two generals Ma Dai and Wei Yan are good friends in Dynasty Warriors. This most likely is a sort of dark inside joke by Omega Force, as in actual history, Wei Yan was killed by Ma Dai after Wei Yan betrayed Shu. Mm. Butai Shin Sengoku Muso. There were multiple Japanese live action plays performed based off of Dynasty That's Warriors. That's a pretty 9. good look for the costume, I'm not gonna lie. They did a good job representing exist, that. But what I do know is that these plays had some of the I'm gonna need that spear to be longer though. costume recreations that I have ever seen. That's pretty good. Dynasty Warriors 4 concept art. There is a really cool collection of character concept art created for Dynasty Warriors 4. 
Some of these designs include several now playable mm. characters like Chen Gong, Guo Jia, and Shun Yu. Oh, I like and that generic. look. For, I like that look for Guo Jia. Even though I, 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 to be honest with you, I'm not really a big fan of how he looks now, but especially because he's like a whore. He just wants to like get with girls, whatever. But I like his look here. The two plumes too. I like that. I like that a lot. Wow. It's like Zhuge Jin, King Mulu, and. Oh. This is Chen Gong. I like this. I really like this a lot. Oh my god. I'm a bit Oh wow, make this make this his new look. I like this a lot compared to his current look in Dicey Wars 9. That looks good. Oh wow. I like that a lot. Tao Hong. For some characters, you can really tell how this concept art influenced their modern designs. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. Jin the other was two. supposed to be purple. Mm. Jin's color is currently a teal and light blue color to highlight the fact that they are in actuality just an offshoot of Wei. However, Jin's color was originally supposed to be purple. Which is weird that you're saying that because the other forces have always been purple. Jin's color was purple at first, and also with Sumayi's designs in older games. Up until Dynasty Warrior 7 and the introduction of Jin, Suma Yi always wore purple to set himself apart from Wei. 2008 Olympics I haven't been able to find any footage to confirm this, but allegedly at the 2008 Beijing Olympics, the Dynasty Warriors 6 track Spring of the East was played during one of the events. I've seen it pop up on a few separate message boards, so I'm inclined to believe it happened. Okay, I know I mentioned this at the, at the top of the video, but the random gaming channel, a random gaming channel, actually has footage of it, like, on the Olympic uh, YouTube channel. You can kind of hear it in the background while the race is still going, and I'm like, wow. I mean, that's pretty awesome to see how far Dynasty Wars has come. It's being literally, songs of it are being playing at the Olympics. Dynasty Warriors 9 Steam 100% Glitch. Mm-hmm. I that can't sucks. confirm this myself, but apparently there is a glitch on the Steam version of Dynasty Warriors 9 where you literally cannot 100% the game. Allegedly, there is a single soundtrack of the game, the character unlock theme, that will never play in the game. Really? Which means you can't unlock it in the sound gallery and 100% max out also, the sound gallery. Wan Ying Ping, double if fist and two, <laughs> two chicken Dynasty legs. Warriors 9 on Steam, let me know in the comments. Dynasty Warriors 4 Infinite Horses In Dynasty Warriors 4, there is a co-op mode glitch Damn, where you can spawn horses. an infinite amount of horses. There are actually a number of glitches involving horses, including players disappearing and also riding invisible horses too. Dynasty Warriors 4 Escape the Arena This game has a versus co-op mode where two players fight against each other. Uh -huh. In this mode, it's actually possible to escape the arena on the Stone Sentinel maze map at Yi Ling. Huh. Once you escape the map, you can explore the rest of the map as if it were a normal battle. What? Shipping Dynasty Warriors is a game with over 100 characters. What? What Many is it? What is? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not that that matters at all. What? What? But what? shipping happens. A lot of shipping. Hold on. Hey, yo, I paused at the worst time. This woman is trying to kill him. Look at how creeped out my child is, man. What are we doing here? It happens. What are we doing here? Hold on, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit, okay? Okay, let's, let's start from the beginning. Any of these character warriors is a game with over 100 characters. Okay. What, 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 what is this? Look, I get. Like, I get that they're mega fans of everything, and I'm a obviously I'm a big fan of Dynasty Warriors. But yo, yo, no, I'm not gonna say nothing. Y'all live your lives, man. Y'all live your lives. Holy shit! Many of these characters, a lot of shipping. That, hold on, that matters. Shaho Yuan and Zhang Liap. But shipping happens a lot. Uh, Lu Shun and Juran, I bet. Lot of shipping happens. 
Capcom lawsuit. Back in Tier 3, I mentioned the disc swap feature that older Warriors games used to have with their Extreme Legends counterpart games. The reason this feature stopped, aside from the switch to more standard DLC format, is because of a Capcom lawsuit. Capcom patented the technology used for disc swap features, despite not actually using those features on any of their own games as far as I know. Mm. It was a really stupid lawsuit that never should have got off the ground, but it- Okay, hold on, I'll wait Koei Tecmo had to pay one million to Capcom, which is really pennies for these massive companies. This lawsuit effectively killed any chance of disc swap coming back to Koei Tecmo games. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it here. A random gaming channel actually um, has uh, what the lawsuit. So he's kind of wrong here, or Wildcat Weather's kind of wrong here. Um, there was a lawsuit regarding the disc swap feature, but there's also a lawsuit regarding another thing where um, it was a technology that Capcom created regarding your controller would vibrate when somebody was behind you. And it was a feature that Catcom patented that Kobe used. Ironically, it wasn't on Dynasty Wars. It was on another Koei Tecmo game. And that's what the lawsuit was about. They're, they lost the this swap feature lawsuit. Um, a, random, a random gaming channel, he does a better job of explaining it better than me. So that's why I'm going to put the link to that video in the description as well. But I think they stopped this swapping because, well, first of all, they I... I mean, I mean, what was the point when you could just do DLC differently? And um, also, I mean, I understand it's still this, but also to me, I can't remember last time I bought a physical copy of a game. Like, I literally cannot remember. So, eh, just wanted, just kind of wanted to clear that up for you guys. Yoho Dune's Eye Cutscene. Oh, I know about this. This is from Shadow Dynasty Wars 1, right? The iconic one-eyed general of Way. Most, if not all, Dynasty Warriors games typically portray how he lost his eye. In most games, it's a harmless cutscene where he pulls the arrow out and bravely keeps fighting. Uh -huh. In Dynasty Warriors 1, though, you get to see... well, you watch it. Trigger warning. I know it's from that. I've never actually seen this cutscene before. Hey, hold up! Hey, yo, y'all just, y'all just gonna show it? Man. Back in those days, things was different. Things was different. They were just showing that shit. Hey, yo, they just fucking show it? Wow. Motion capture. Dynasty Warriors 1 has some pretty good animations, and apparently that's because some of the animations were done using motion capture. Since later Dynasty Warriors games use these animations, I like Guan Yu's. Uh, uh, I like his outfit on this, even though he's getting his ass kicked by Dion Wei. I like his outfit a lot. In some form, I'm also pretty sure Dynasty Warriors Six used motion capture for its animations, as some of them are extremely fluid and realistic. Tier Six. The Dion is bisexual. Xia Hoji. Huh. Xiao Ji debuted in Dynasty Warriors 9 uh, as a unique shit. NPC and eventually too. became playable through DLC. She is easily the most controversial character in Dynasty Warriors history and was the topic of countless arguments in the Warriors fandom after her reveal. Mm -hmm. Why is this? Well, small trigger warning. In the actual history, Xiao Ji was a family member of Wei General Xiao Yuan, who, at the age of around 13, was kidnapped by Shu General Zhang Fe and forced to marry him. She would eventually become the mother of Xing Tsai. As if that wasn't bad enough, Dynasty Warriors portrays her as a sheltered child, now married to a full-grown adult in Zhang Fe and in a loving relationship with him. This is this is the this is the worst part. Like okay. I know about this. I never talked about this when fans were just duking it out in the subreddit and other places. I just fucking watched because I didn't know even this girl even existed, right? But I feel some type of way about it, man. That's why I'll, I'll probably never play as her in Dynasty Wars 9. Like, this is a literal child, right? 13. And I get, you know, Dynasty Wars, they're literally covering up a lot of the atrocities a lot of these people committed, okay? I understand that. 
but this is this is weird as fuck. I don't play Zhang Fei a lot anyway, but this sealed it for me. Unless I absolutely have to, I will never play as him again. Like I know it's weird to kind of hold this over, a, you know, a fictional depiction of a, of a person in history, but that's so fucking weird that he did that. Ah, I'm getting like, ah, man, fuck. It's just weird. Ugh. I don't like it. I don't fucking like it. Her children, Xing Tsai and Zhang Bao, both look older than her. Mm -hmm. It's frankly a disgusting portrayal and the worst sugarcoating of history done in Dynasty Warriors, in my opinion. Absolutely. So Samurai Warriors does is where they age up characters. Like, if why don't they just at least age her up at least so she shouldn't be looking like she's 13, like right before the Battle of Yiling where Zhang Fei gets killed. Or during that conflict. Like, like, like that's, all, that's all I'm fucking saying. Fuck, man. It's fucking weird, bro. It's, ugh. Gan Ning looking for the kid. Trigger warning again. In Dynasty Warriors 7, there's an event with Gan Ning where he is upset and searching for a child. No other context. Hey, yo, this better not be leading well, where I'm, where I think it's going. Because I'm about to stop this video. Is an incident between Gan Ning, Lu Meng, and one of Gan Ning's child servants. Hey, the yo, servant, what are we doing here? Small boy made some kind of a mistake and was scared of what Gan Ning would do to him because of it. Gan Ning is well known as a bloodthirsty, ill-tempered person. Yes. The boy ran off to Lu Meng for protection. When Gan Ning and Lu Meng spoke about the boy. Gan Ning acted pleasant, as if nothing was wrong. Lu Meng returned the boy to Gan Ning, only for Gan Ning to then take the boy, tie him to a tree, and shoot him to death with a bow. Uh... I know it's weird that I'm agonizing this much about it, man, but this is a game series that I love and I know the Dynasty Wars Kingdom is just whitewashing history because we don't really see what the fuck's going on but oh uh, why would you even put that in the game bro why would you even put a mission like that alluding to that in the game <sighs> oh god Ning's off the list now too for a fucking while fuck Lu Meng apparently wanted to kill Gan Ning for what he did to the boy he should have killed so Gan Ning should have fucking killed Strike him. Force Multi Raid 3 Theory. There's a theory that a third Strike Force game was in development around the same time as Dynasty Warriors 7. The evidence for this is found in the DLC for Warriors Orochi 3. In this DLC, the Fury form designs from Strike Force were added into the game. Every character from Multi Raid 2 had their design brought over to Warriors Orochi 3. But even more importantly, almost all of the new characters added in Dynasty Warriors 7 also got completely brand new Fury Mode designs. Mm. Now it's possible that Omega Force created these new designs purely for Warriors Orochi 3 DLC, but Omega Force's track record of laziness suggests that these designs were made for a Strike Force 3, Strike Force 3 then got cancelled, and they needed to use the new designs for something. In test shipping. Shipping isn't all that happens. Yeah, in wild the as Dynasty fuck. Warriors what is going on here, bro? There also is, for some reason, in test shipping as well. Jesus Christ. Famitsu is paid off. Famitsu is one of Japan's premier gaming magazines, especially in the West. Uh. Famitsu is perhaps most known for their game reviews and ratings, and I find these ratings very suspicious, especially when it comes to Koei games. So are they like the IGN of, of, of uh, video game points. reviewers there over there? Games rated by Famitsu. Dynasty Warriors 8, beloved by fans, is rated 36 out of 40. Okay. Dynasty Warriors 9, a game that many would consider objectively worse than 8 in almost every way, is rated 35 out of 40. Excuse me? Dynasty Warriors 6, despised by most fans, is a 33 out of 40. Dynasty Warriors 4, the best-selling game in the series, is a 36 out of 40. Yo! Do you see what I mean now? These games vary wildly in quality, but the score hardly ever changes. 
maybe this is an open secret or something, but it seems clear to me that Famitsu is being paid off in some way to leave at least a decent review huh, like, on every single Koei game. Like how EA feels like they pay off IGN and just keep giving Madden like good reviews when Madden has been the exact same game for damn near 10 years, even longer than that now. But sports players, sports gamers, just keep buying into it. So Madden will never change. It's crazy the NFL has not introduced a competitor yet because the NFL is all about making money. And if they let another company challenge EA and you just make money from both games, it's crazy that they just don't do that. I know, they, I know they let, they're going to let somebody make an arcade version, but that's not the same. EA needs to be challenged on Madden, and I'm not trying to turn this into a Madden video, but like... The fact that Madden has been able to do this to fans for so long and nobody, no, like, no, no, oh, that's not true. Nobody's willing to say anything. Angry Joe every year makes a fucking video on Madden, okay? Every fucking year, and he just tells you like it is. They're using the same shit, okay? Soft Drink TV talks about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he talks about Madden and how bad it is now. But, like, nobody is truly having a conversation because I know there's still fucking guys who do, they ult they bust ultimate team packs and things like that and just deceive their customers who are kids who are just getting money from their parents. It's disgusting as fuck, okay? I'm not sitting here saying Koei's perfect because Koei also has really bad DLC practices, which is something that I do not follow at all. But, shit, that might, might this might, this whole situation might need to get its own video. But I'm just talking now. Lidian is bisexual. He do be saying some sus stuff, I'm not gonna lie. Lidian and Eugen are best friends in Especially Dynasty, Dynasty Warriors. 8. I was like, hey, yo, what are we doing As here, bro? the two were added together, they are seen together in almost all of their appearances. That, in and of itself, does not mean there's any romance between them. Mm -hmm. But some of Lidian's voice lines definitely suggest he might have a thing for Eugen. Or, well, anyone, really. I think I'm in love. Wen Young is a reincarnation of Zhao Yun. Wen Young is a relatively new character in Dynasty Warriors fighting for the Jin faction. He happens to be in many ways eerily similar to the series poster boy Zhao Yun with mm -hmm. their weapons, mannerisms, They really hammer and that so in Dynasty Warriors. Wen Young's entire existence revolves around the fact that there are no more heroes in the land by the time he is fighting. Zhao Yun did die before Wen Yong was born, so Wen Yong being a reincarnation could definitely be something Koei is implying. So, the one thing Zhao Yun is really known for is what he did, what he does at Chang Ban, where he goes to go rescue Liu Shan and the rest of Liu Bei's family, right? And then he wades into Cao Cao's forces with Liu Shan trying to get to Liu Bei, right? Um, a, random ga a random gaming channel also said that um, when Yang has also has a feat kind of similar where he leads like a strike team and raids Sima Shur's camp multiple times, including holding off a few pursuers by himself. So that's that's when like kind of the, the reputation for Wen Yang. So I'm like, oh, he's like he's like Zhao Yun. That's why he's like the reincarnation of Zhao Yun. So just something like that. Sugarcoating of graphic events. Yes, this is still a teen Being game. Based on ancient China, there are obviously a lot of. Let me pause right here. You do not want to technically know the story between these two, okay? It's it Zenji's actual like history is fucking tragic. It's fucking tragic, and I understand. But I'm not surprised that they sugarcoat it like that. Dynasty Wars and it's all. It's not. It's not even a. Uh, what do you call it? It's not even a rated M. It's never going to be a rated M series. It's always rated T for teen. So you're, you're just going to have to. I think they use like bastard, maybe the only curse word that they've ever used in the entire series. So, yeah. Horrific events that happen in Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Trigger warning, but some of these events include cannibalism, kidnapping, uh, yep. the standard horrors and crimes of war, yep. a ridiculous amount of suicide, both forced and not forced, and mass executions of entire generations of families. Mm -hmm. Almost all of this is glossed over or danced around. For example, Xiao Ji, which we already talked about, mm -hmm. or some events are simply referenced to, like Ganning and the Child.
the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? That was weird. And that's the iceberg. If I missed any... <clears throat> Sorry about that. As I was saying, if I missed any obscure wait, 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 Dynasty it... Warriors facts, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, Warriors. Wait, 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 wait. Is it, are you telling me that uh, uh, Wildcat Weather using that one of them voice things to change his voice or her voice? I apologize. Um, that's crazy. But that was a pretty good video. Um, God, this this thing's gonna be like two hours long. Like I said before, I tried to uh, I tried to uh, make a reaction. Well, I did make a reaction video on Super Eye Patch Wolf's the unreality of wrestling covering Roman Reigns' entire WWE career, but WWE claimed that to all hell. Um, so this is probably going to be my first reaction video. If you guys have any more reaction videos you guys would like me to do, let me know in the comments because I would like to, to do something while I'm working on these bigger, um, videos. Uh, so I try at least give you some kind of content, but this was fun. This was a lot of fun. Um, I want to do another reaction to, oh, here it is right here. I heard of this guy ish. He does like Minecraft content right i watched his 200 players build a massive civilization um video about a couple weeks ago and i thought it was great then he showed that he did a thousand player one so i want to react to that as well but i might just watch that by myself first because i mean look how long it is an hour and 13 minutes and the way i talk that shit's gonna be like five hours um so if you guys are interested in that let me know but i thought it was fascinating just kind of seeing that you know this big community and especially whenever i hear about um here's the unreality of pro wrestling by the way go watch this video it's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic but um learning whenever i hear the word social experiment i remember all those guys in like the late 2010s who were like oh blah 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 oh like what was it the one where like this hot girl walked by a guy and he's like kind of mid or ugly or whatever and then he'd try to ask for a number she'd say no then he'd walk over to his ferrari or whatever supercar that he rented clearly and then, like, the girl would turn around, like, oh, wait, wait, wait. And then she'd, like, run over and basically throw her titties in his face trying to talk to him. And then, he'd be, and then he'd, like, drive away, like, cussing her out. So then, like, dudes would be like, yeah, fuck that bitch, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, like those things were clearly fake. But I thought this was awesome. I would love to be, like, a fly on the wall just watching something like this go down. I think that would be amazing to see. I don't know anything about Minecraft. Nothing at all besides, like, you build stuff, right? But... I can only imagine the amount of time that took to create, edit, narrate. Cause he does he he does really good narration on his two hundred player one. So I can only imagine even the stories. And do they just keep going after he stopped? Because I think in on Ish's thing, they only did it for like ten actual like real life days. So um, I wonder if the stories just kept going. But now I'm just doing now i'm just talking so anyway guys that was the dynasty wars iceberg video i hope you guys enjoyed the video go check out more of wildcat weather's comment uh content um don't forget to check out the uh random gaming channel a random gaming channel to watch his additions to the his additions to the um the dynasty, dynasty wars iceberg video here it is right here um, I checked out his his uh, a certain random gaming channel. I checked out his channel. He's also a reviewer, um, but I thought it was cool. I thought I thought some of his content is good. I need to watch more, but um, I'm also interested by like his Dynasty Warriors Nine review, talking about Dynasty Warriors Nine. So, wow, I thought it was good. I thought it was good, but. Uh, uh, oh, 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 I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm saying I thought it was good. I thought I'm thinking that maybe his defense on the thing would be good. But anyway, guys, uh, that's it for me. I am going to go eat because I need to get ready to go to work. And uh, I will see you guys later. Have a great day. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments, and send me send me things you want me to react to because I'm doing that. Now. I'm also trying to work in some live streams, um, of content where maybe we just talk about stuff whatever you want to talk about eventually i'm i need to probably the thing i'm probably gonna end up doing is doing a live stream about re-zero because i might need some help with that but i will see you guys later take care of yourself and thank you for 
watching. Peace.